ProBox TV. I am here with my powerful partners. First of all, the nine-time world champion. We're at Roy Jones Jr. And the five-time world champion. The magic man, Antonio Tarver. Powerful partner, the two-time world champion. I'm the smaller magic man, Paulie Malinaji. <laughs> well, if this is a Marvel team, as somebody said, then the big I'm three. Man. The big three, baby. The big three. Well, hey, shh. Four. Big three and the little guy. There you Thank go. you, Roy. Big three <laughs> <laughs> and the point guard. We'll there, say there, that because you got to hey, dish it to I'm us. I'm good with that. I'm Big good three and MG. There right. you go. That's it. There you go. All right. Real quickly, before we get into the fight guide this weekend, which includes our global launch, how excited are you, Roy, to get things officially started? I'm always excited, man, to get things started because... It says a lot, and this is a historic moment for the sport of boxing because boxing has never had any type of a channel that was all day boxing, strictly boxing. Usually because of the situation, I mean, situation now, we deal with uh, combat sports. We put in, we're, yeah. we're lumped into that sport. But with Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg. This is the week, the global launch of Pro Box TV. I am here with my powerful partners. First of all, the nine-time world champion. We're at Roy Jones Jr. And the five-time world champion. The magic man, Antonio Tarver. Powerful partner, the two-time world champion. I'm the smaller magic man, Paulie Malinaji. <laughs> well, if this is a Marvel team, as somebody said, then the big I'm three. Ant man The big three, baby. The big three. Well, hey, shh. Me. Four. Big three and the little guy. There you Thank go. you, Roy. Big three <laughs> <laughs> and the point guard. We'll there, say that because you got to hey, dish it to I'm us. I'm good with that. I'm Big good three with that. and MG. There right. you go. That's it. There you go. All right. Real quickly, before we get into the fight guide this weekend, which includes our global launch, how excited are you, Roy, to get things officially started? I'm always excited, man, to get things started because... It says a lot, and this is a historic moment for the sport of boxing, because boxing has never had any type of a channel that was all day boxing, strictly boxing. Usually, because of the situation, I mean situation now, we deal with uh, combat sports. We put in, we're, yeah. we're lumped into that sport, but we're the oldest of the combat sport. So boxing deserves, and has deserved for the longest time, its own attention. And finally, it's happened. So it is. ProBox TV. Get the app. Go to YouTube. Do whatever you need. Like, subscribe, sign up. Just $1.99 a month. Our main event on Friday. Two-time world champion Jean Pascal against Ming Fan Long. Paulie, same question I said to Roy, though. Here it is. We've been talking about this for a while. And here we go. It's time to fight. Yeah, yeah, and really, uh, uh, it's exciting. It's for uh, for fans and for and for us as well, really, to to be uh, together as a team. I think fans, first and foremost, will will view this team and and get excited just for the fact that you have a chance to listen to guys like myself, Antonio, and Roy, uh, you know, discuss chatter all things boxing. You know, we are, we're going to have a, a lot of content on the channel. Uh, as Roy said before at Look Winley, uh, just, you know, we've never had a, an all boxing channel. Other sports tend to have these, you know, you have an NHL network, you have, uh, uh, an, uh, and the NBA has its own channel, the tennis channel has its own channel, uh, tennis has its own channel, golf has its own channel, and so on and so forth. Um, to have this kind of content, all boxing, you know, a, a mixture of live events, Again, our chatter, our, our podcast on the on the YouTube channel uh, will link us back here. Uh, uh, um, great, great shows and, and 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 content that will continue to keep growing through the years. As the channel will keep growing through the years, and for an affordable price, as you said, on dollar ninety nine a month, I think it's a it's so much uh, excitement for the, for fans because uh, we're we're going to be a network where we discuss all things boxing. You can yes. come here, and it's not just. Um, network based like a lot of th channels that we see a lot of uh, promotional entities that we see in the sport of boxing where they focus just on their stable we we obviously have a stable here but we love to focus on the sport as a whole where boxing fans can come here as the headquarters of the sport of boxing and, and discuss that and and that's a perfect way to put it paulie because we're going to get into the fight guide in a moment but uh magic man one sorry paulie magic man one I, i've got to ask you the same thing is finally here. You you have had this in, infectious enthusiasm since the first day I met you, and now you get it's it's like fight week. It, well, it is fight week. It's like a fight week, isn't it? 
Yeah, we're excited, man. It's just, uh, I mean, Gary Jonas planted that seed, um, brought us in. We believed in the platform. We believed in what his initial, you know, goal was to bring, you know, the real boxing fans yes. in and let them find a home where they can count on, you know, 50-50 fights. You know, that's what we stand for. We want action. We believe good fighters make great fights, so they have to be pitted against each other. You know, so we want to let the boxing fans know that they can count on Pro Box TV to give them the exciting fights that we need and that we, uh, we, we depend on. Long overdue, buckle up, boxing fans, combat sports fans, Pro Box TV. It's going to be available on Apple TV, on your Android device, on Amazon Fire Stick. We're working on the other platforms. Of course, you can watch us on YouTube. In the app, it's the way to go because you get all the content there and it's put together beautifully. Let's talk about the big fights this weekend. The big title fight that everybody's talking about, Roy, is on Showtime. $12, by the way, and it's uh, Benavides and Lemieux for the vacant WBC interim super middleweight title. Obviously, Benavides has been getting a lot of love lately and well-deserved. Yeah, um, I'm just going to tell you because I know they've been telling you. They said you got to bring your mic a little closer oh, to your mouth. You. So anyway, but um, at the same time, for me, that fight on paper is probably the fans' favorite because they know David Lemieux and they know Benavides. Yes. Now, what this fight does is it puts pressure on Canelo that if you want to stay the WBC super middleweight champion, you have to now face the winner of this fight. So that's a big issue right there as well. So there, there are two reasons why this fight, in my opinion, is one of the most important fights because you're making pretty much Canelo say either put up or shut up and there's two guys that we know. So I think that's a great fight. And, and that's something that we're going to get into throughout our time here on Pro Box TV is there's too many great fighters that the fans do not really know. Those are two exceptions, much to Roy's point, but there's too many that they don't know. And that's the one thing we're going to change here on Pro Box TV. So that's the big fight on Showtime. The cost is $12. I'm going to get into a, you know, a cost. I'm going to be the accountant here <laughs> for a moment. Um, let's go to ESPN, $7 for ESPN. Janabek and Danny Digman, uh, vacant WBO interim middleweight world title. What do you like about that fight? Why will it potentially be entertaining, Paulie? It's entertaining. You know, uh, obviously, the interim world title puts guys into a, a more marketable position to fight for the main world title. A lot of hype on, on Johnny Beck. You know, Eastern European fighters in general uh, tend to come with uh, a lot of momentum. They tend to come with uh, big amateur experience, and they tend to bring that great amateur experience and translate into a, a successful boxing career. Uh, I've noticed that trend since the the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990, slowly but surely, the fighters from that part of the world have, you know, slowly grown into that prof the professional ranks. I can remember when they, the the fall of communism first happened, a lot of those guys were still staying in the amateurs. Sure. I remember uh, Gaiderbeck, Gaiderbekov, who beat Gennady Golovkin in the in the Olympic finals, never turned pro, you know? So, but now you're starting to see more and more of them kind of transcend the sport and, and turn pro. So Johnny Beck is one of these guys, you know, uh, a, a lot of push behind him. And uh, uh, winning this fight over, over Dingma, who's, who's, no, who's no slouch himself, but if, if, the, the eyes are on Johnny Beck. And, and if he can get a win and, and, and uh, impress in this fight, I think his, con his name will start to come into the conversation for the uh, bigger middleweight titles as well. And, of course, $7 a month uh, at ESPN. That's a great point you make, too, though, uh, about Jenny Beck, is that the same thing, the same opportunity exists here on Pro Box TV when you talk about Mong Feng Long. This will be the biggest fight any boxer from China has ever participated in. More eyes will be on our main event on Friday night than any other for a boxer from China. It's usually the Olympics, where'd they go? Well, here he is, and he's gonna take on the two-time world champion, Jean Pascal. Before that, though, Antonio, let's talk about the zone, $20. And it's uh, Bootsai and Richard, light heavyweights. Interesting that we're talking about light heavyweights because that'll transition, well, you guys, and it will transition nicely into our main event. But the zone fight, $20 to watch that one. That's a good uh, headliner. Both of these guys have an unbelievable opportunity now that Boval just beat Canelo. 
So now we have a player in the light heavyweight division, speaking of the fight that we're going to be covering as well. Yes. See, all these guys are trying to get in the sweepstakes for the Baval sweepstakes to put their name in there against a guy that just got all of this visibility by defeating Canelo. So right now, overnight, the light heavyweight division has woken up, has, has woken up like it was when me and Roy was on top. So now these guys are gunning for position. When you fight the cash cow, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's what it's all about. You know, now he's made a name for himself. He's an international uh, figure now. Now Baval is the light heavyweight money maker. Now these guys can get paid. Yep. So now the light heavyweight division is on fire, the zone, and Pro Box TV going to have four of the top light heavyweights in the world fighting this weekend. So like subscribe sign up you're ready to go you get to hear from our great panel of world champions and so much more right here on pro box tv if you watch the fight we all watch the canelo fight dimitri at the end in the interview roy and he's a soft-spoken guy but he did mention when they were talking about the rematch or not kind of like <laughs> well depends on you know the do re mis he, he did talk a little bit about the mm -hmm. financial opportunity that he has now yeah he, he's a big name now because yeah. he upset the pound for pound number one guy yep so that being said he becomes a ticket himself it's like when you beat the guy you become a target now everybody that was gunning for canelo some of those guys now are going to be gunning for him yep. why because he beat canelo and canelo is still the big name and don't get it wrong Canelo's still the biggest name outside of the heavyweight division because he's Latino, and they follow and support their fighters. But now Bivol has a bigger name because he was able to beat him. First time Canelo lost in nine years. Where does Jean Pascal, our main event, Friday night, the global launch, Pro Box TV, don't call it a comeback. It is the return of the two-time world champion, the Haitian who has been in Canada forever, the one, the only Jean Pascal, against the number one IBF light heavyweight contender in Mong Fan Long. Where in the light heavyweight picture does a guy like Jean Pascal, if he looks great on Friday night, Roy, where does he set himself up? Well, he sets himself up in a good position because for me, the fight that I thought that would have been better for, for um, Canelo would have been to go fight Pascal when Pascal was champion yeah. because he has a more of an explosive style, sure. but he's a lot closer to height-wise and size-wise to Canelo. Their fight style is a little bit similar because they're both explosive. Uh, Canelo may be a little bit more polished as far as defensively, but Pascal would have been a great fight for him. Now with Pascal fighting Mung, we got to see what happens because if Mung wins, we want to see him fight Bebo. Yeah. If Pascal wins, we don't know. We might want to see him fight uh Arthur better be of. We don't know. Which, because, which was supposed to happen. Because styles make fights. Yeah. You understand me? So it's like the winner, we know what we want to see, but the style of fights is what we're really interested in because styles make fights. Me and him can fight a thousand times. It's going to be a great <laughs> fight every time <laughs> because watching. of our styles. Yep. You understand me? Yep. So styles make fights. And that's what makes Pro Box TV Polly so special. $1.99 a month. Pro Box TV, we're going to have monthly live fights. We've got some things that we can't tell you today that are going to be magical, that the boxing fan is going to say, thank you, Pro Box TV, finally. You're finally bringing it to us the way it should be brought. So for $1.99, you get to watch the Global Launch, our last chance tournament we'll get to a little bit later on in another segment of the podcast. But, Paulie, Jean Pascal himself, and then this outstanding Chinese boxer, Mong Fan Long, for $1.99. Yeah, and, and, and as Roy, quarterbacking back off what Roy said, you know, styles make fights, you know, and, and that's kind of the, the mantra here at Pro Box. We want good fighters and great fights, and we're analyzing the styles, you know, how, how, do they, how are they gonna blend together? Because you can sometimes have very good fighters against one another, but the styles may clash, you know, and, and not make for an entertaining fight. We're pretty convinced that Mong Fan Long, uh, with his boxing style, and, and Jean Pascal with his athletic boxing style, will come into play and, 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 and give us an exciting fight. Pascal is always a guy who, first of all, will fight anybody, you know. Uh, Roy was saying, oh, we may want to see Pascal and better be if he wins. And Pascal is one of those guys, where you look at his resume and you say, this guy fought everybody. I mean, this guy was not yep. willing to back away from any 
funny, but he never shot away from a challenge, both at super middleweight and light heavyweight. That's why I agree with Roy that uh, Pascal would have been a better matchup with for Canelo if Kevin Pascal had been the champion at the time Canelo came up in weight because he's an ex-super middleweight just as Canelo is. In the meantime... Canelo wound up having to go up against the more natural light heavyweight in Dimitri Bivol, and that was one of the several one of several problems he wound up having in the fight. Nonetheless, a win for Pascal, a guy with such a big name in boxing, a guy who some people question how much he has left, all his experience, sure. is he shop worn, is he not? Guys like that, though, the fact that there's always curiosities about them. Once they win a fight, they're back in the mix because everybody knows them already. Everybody's like, oh my goodness, he's back. Who can we match him up against? Because he's never in a bad fight. And that's the thing about Jean Pascal. And that's also why Meng Feng Long is looking, is gunning for him. Because he's probably out of the light heavyweight division, pre Dimitri Bivol Canelo. Mm -hmm. Pascal's probably the most known light heavyweight in the world. No question. You know, uh, he's, he's, he's the, I, I, I've worked several fights in Canada. And, and even though I never worked a Pascal fight in Canada, they always, the word was always Pascal is the biggest ticket seller in Canada. He's the guy that everybody comes and, to see. And he was. Yeah. So when you kind of go by that, by go off of that, if if is a reason Mong Feng Long, this is such a big fight for Mong Feng Long, because beating a guy like this, the most known guy in your weight class, automatically, just like Bebo just did with Canelo, who's the most known guy in the sport, it, it you can kind of piggyback off that and make yourself a popular name. And then of course, again, as Roy said, do we get Feng Mong Feng Long with Dimitri Bebo, two guys who have just may have just catapulted themselves into a higher position because of key wins in their careers. We'll see. Well, you know, you'll only find out if you tune in to Pro Box TV this weekend and see who wins the fight between Jean Pascal and Meng Feng Long. But that's how much is riding on it and big opportunities for both guys. And we will have behind the scenes interviews. We'll have these guys talking to the two men in our main event. The one thing all four of us were discussing earlier today is what pushes the button? What boxers do you want to watch? Why should you watch this or that? And Antonio, we were saying, all right, do you have to be that loud, obnoxious guy? Um, a, a style that's exciting, that finishes fights is obviously key. But, but a lot of great fighters don't get the love and attention that they deserve. What they will get here on Pro Box TV is all of that and more, so Antonio, if they bring it, if they bring it in that exciting style, do they catapult just for that very reason? Because myself as a fan, if I see two guys bringing it, then I do want to see that particular boxer against Bevo next. Well, I mean, both of these guys are going to do themselves a service for bringing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Only one person can win. That one person is going to go on to have that momentum, to be able to build off of that and continue. How long can he ride that out? Depends. But for the loser, it's important that he makes a, a, a statement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, we want to see the heart. You know, they say it's two, two type of fighters. One, you got One you can make quit, and the other one, you got to knock out because he ain't going nowhere. And those are the type of fighters we're looking for over here at Pro Box TV because, like I said, great Good fighters make great fights. And I like this main event because there's so much at stake. This is truly a crossroad fight. When you look at these two combatants, where are they going? Pascal, we don't know. Can he still raise that bar? Yeah. You know, Ming Fun Long, can he elevate to this level? He's never is been he in one of the next big stars. Exactly. And now this is his opportunity to show the world that coming off of that major weekend we just had. He can catapult himself to be the next big light heavyweight next to Baval. So he, everybody this weekend is looking to make a statement. All right, Roy Jones Jr., Paulie Malignaggi, Antonio Tarver. I said we'll talk about the last chance tournament a little later. It's, it's too exciting. It's, it's too great of a format to wait. Roy, we have eight men who will compete and have what we call a last chance. These are fighters who have suffered some losses. Different things have taken them off their world championship path, goals, and dreams. When I say last chance, tell our Pro Box TV subscribers or subscribers to be what the last chance tournament means. Well, in my opinion, the last chance tournament means the old saying, you either crap or get up off the pot. <laughs> <laughs> it's do oh, or no. die yes it's now or never this is your last chance now to have a 
pit full of hungry dogs all trying to get one bone. It's going to be some real madness. Yes. And that's what I love about this tournament. All eight guys know the same thing. This is my last chance. Only problem is, it's his last chance too. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we said we wanted fights that were 50-50. That's it. We got a whole 50-50 tournament. Not just fights. We got a 50-50 tournament. We don't know who might win. We, we really don't. We really don't. <laughs> we know we have eight hungry fighters, like Roy said, who are going to bring it. Antonio, the beautiful thing, and, and Paul, we'll get to you in a sec, is that this is a last chance, but in a way, another last chance for these boxers because the way the boxing and the platforms have been, a lot of times you guys didn't have another chance. Something goes wrong once or twice, then, okay, we write you off, you're done. This is a, a second last chance, which doesn't mean I want to diminish last chance, but it also makes it that much more important and that much more intriguing. And I think so. I, I think it's a feather in our cap yes. for the structure of this tournament because it gives these guys another opportunity. But when you look at these guys' records, you, you rarely find these type of guys on national broadcast TV. You know what I mean? Showing live, you know, a, a global. You know, so these are the opportunities, not that they're getting again, but they may never have had an opportunity like this to be shown on a, on a show like this part, uh, with Pascal and these guys fighting in a tournament. The pressure, the pressure of the last chance tournament, I believe is going to bring out the best in all these fighters. And that's what we're looking to see. Let me throw one name out. Antonio Moran is, is one of the eight. He fought Devin Heaney back in 2019. So there, there are guys who fought Barboza. There are guys, Paulie, in our quarterfinal matchup that were selected for a reason. Either things went wrong away or they did hit those great champions or champions to be, and they've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and here we go. Yeah, sometimes you just get matched up with them a little bit too early. You know, you don't have anybody looking out for your career, and you sort of uh, take a risk at an earlier point in your career than it might be uh, conducive to, and right. maybe that risk doesn't go well. And now all of a sudden, you know, you, you, didn't have a lot of, you didn't have a lot of leverage before, which is why you were in those kind of fights to begin with, and now you have even less leverage, and it puts them in a position where they sort of fall into that opponent a uh, uh, realm that that subject matter and and they don't want to be they still feel like there's there's a lot to give and it's just uh, the way the business is structured a lot of times it hasn't given guys like that an opportunity well we said okay you know some people may have may think you've had your last chance and now you you're just in the opponent uh, uh, the opponent uh, realm but we're going to give you guys a last chance for real you don't want to be in the opponent realm okay you come here perform you got to go up against one another everybody's in the same boat but if you can perform here you know what? You're gonna be now. You're not, now you're gonna be more so as looked at as the guy to watch, the guy to be on the lookout for. If you're as if you're named as an opponent in the future, it'll be in a big fight. It won't just be yes. for a prospect on on the, on the rise where there's not a lot at stake uh, um, as far as uh, viewership is concerned. Now. Even if you're in a tough fight in the future, if you're able to come out of this tournament, you may wind up in a tough fight in the future, tough situations, but because of the notoriety you may have, you'll probably get paid better, you'll have more viewership on yourself, and also, of course, the opportunity just becomes magnified. So, but you can't get there unless you win here first. So for that reason, for me, it, it creates a lot of positivity. It creates uh, terrific fights. You know, you may not know all these guys. Some of these guys you may know. Some of these guys you may look, have to look at box strike and check them out. But when you match them up against each other, they're all in the same boat. Desperation. And desperation versus desperation means you're going to be willing to go to places that certain other fighters may not go to. And against when, it, when it's against one another, I think it only spells pure entertainment for fans watching. You're going to, you know... For boxing fans, they'll watch any fights. We're, we're, right. we're, we're, that, we're that kind of, uh, especially the hardcore fans, we're those, we're those kind of fans. You put a fight on TV, we're not going to change the channel. We're going to watch it. So we're giving you here at Pro Box TV for $1.99 a month, we're giving you constant entertaining fights. Whether you know the fighters, whether those fighters are yet to be known and they may become known uh, like, like the opportunity the last chance guys have, they're going to be entertaining because we make sure the matchups entertain. Real quick to close out the last chance tournament, Roy, then we're going to recap the fight guide. And, of course, we're going to tell you that we will look forward to seeing you on Friday night. We've got one fighter who was working third shift. FedEx, then he goes, he opens his own power washing business so he could have more time to train. 
for this last chance. Roy, isn't that a young man that you want to root for? A dude who's like worked his tail off because things didn't work out in boxing. Now he's got a last chance. I, I personally, I get invested in those type of stories. Yeah, I do too. And I, of course we all do because we all know him. I'm sure Tarver knows somebody that should have made it that didn't. Yes. Harlan knows somebody that should have made it that didn't. I know several guys that should have made it that didn't. All of them had different reasons why they didn't make it. Well, now we get to take off all that, clean up all those acts. Now you got a fair chance to try to make it. I'm sure not only does he have a story, but I'm sure there's two or three more stories in that group that are just as effective or will have the same impact on us on a whole, as a whole no question. As, as does his story. So when you see guys finally getting this opportunity like this, you don't get this often. We, of course, at our time, we never had that opportunity. Now they got it. You got it. And now, and now they got to poop or get off the pot. Thanks to Pro Box, they got to crap or get off the pot. Don't get crap. I, I, was, I was trying to remember if you went G, P, G, you know. Well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to use the bad language. No. <laughs> like my dad or my granddad used to tell me, you know. There you go. So Showtime, $12 is a big title fight, obviously. Lemieux and Benavides are well mm. known. ESPN, $7. Chanda back and uh, Danny Digna. Th that's a, a fun fight. To zone the twenty dollar light heavyweight fight, and then our main event, the light heavyweight division, two time world champion Sean Pascal and Mong Fan Long. I will tell you this: we have the nine time world champion Superman Roy Jones Jr. We have two magic, not one bit of magic, two doses of magic. The magic men, Paulie Malinaji and Tony Tarver. The one thing that will separate Pro Box TV from the others is we are absolutely thrilled and honored to have these men be on our team because this will be the best broadcast team in boxing. Like, subscribe, do it all. You know how to use your phones. You know how to use your Apple TV. Let's see you Friday night. Pascal and man. What is Pro Box TV? It's a very interesting story if you tell it. The Boxing Channel. We call it living the life. Why is it the Boxing Channel? I say it best this way. Boxing is what we do. All boxing content worldwide. Two to three live events a month. Pro Box TV as the Future Star series where you get to watch young professionals begin their careers and follow them through their journey. Look, are they going to crash and burn? Are they going to fulfill their promise? I can tell you I've had enough of them. Some have fulfilled and some haven't. Our contender series, all evenly matched action fights. We are trying to establish a level and a brand of boxing that is action-oriented and more fan-friendly. If you're a runner, a holder, or strictly a counterpuncher, then Pro Box TV is not for you. We believe in good fighters and great fights. These guys are committed to it, and I think the fans are going to love it. Our bracketed tournament, The Last Chance, is where you get to see fighters on the brink of oblivion work their way back to contention. All brought to you by our founders, the legendary Roy Jones Jr., Juan Manuel Marquez, Antonio the Magic Man Tarver, and our very own Polly Malinaji. Calling all the action live only on Pro Box TV. For just $1.99 a month or $18 a year, you get live fights, boxing news, podcasts, original content, and more. You know what? I think it's going to be an interesting look for the fans to get to watch all this unfold. That is ProBots TV. Okay, Fight Fans, the two to three live shows. Nah, I'm thinking the daily podcast and the talk shows, that's where you get your money's worth at. Fellas, 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 ProBox TV originals, you're forgetting us behind the scenes, reality TV. That's worth your dollar ninety nine a month. Nah, nah, I'm worth more than dollar ninety nine a month. I don't know where you come from and all that. So I mean, you got to me from all that. Super bad at spoken. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is all day long. Okay, boxing fan. Obviously, one ninety nine per month is great value.
Here we go! It's time to fight! Tonight here in Tampa, our mission begins. All boxing, all the time. Tonight, we embark on a major magnification of the form and fashion of which the sweet science is presented to you, the loyal combat fan. The wait is finally over. Here we go. It is time to fight. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. Welcome to the global launch of Pro Box TV. From this day forward, Pro Box TV will be your premier destination for all things boxing, presented with the same level of passion and commitment that you, the loyal combat fan, displays every single day. And to do that, we've got a trio that I, I am very honored to call my broadcast partners, the nine-time world champion, Roy Jones Jr., five-time world champion, Antonio Tarver, two-time world champion, Pauli Malignaggi. We finally begin tonight, Roy, and I would say that we are looking to attack the sports coverage the same way that you did as a fighter, with precision, fashion, and a little bit of fun. A little bit of fun, a little bit of style, a lot of fashion, a lot of precision. We want good fights, we want 50-50 fights, we want fights that we don't know who's gonna win. I mean, it's like, once again, Superman versus Batman. He ain't Batman, <laughs> but he that man, you heard me? So, I mean, it's just, you never know. So, I mean, this is what we're trying to bring back to the table. Our Batman, also known as <laughs> the Magic Man, what would you have given to have this type of platform back in your prime? You know what? It, it gives these young uh, fighters an opportunity for exposure that they wouldn't have never had on these undercards of the big fights. You know, you get shuffled and hid away sometime, and it's two or three years before we see your face again. Where this, here at Pro Box TV, we got you all the time, baby. It's the exposure that they're gonna get that they never had before right here at Pro Box TV. You know, Paulie, like they say before a big fight, the wait is finally over. What can fans expect? Well, it's a big anticipation here. You know, there's boxing coverage all the time. What does that mean? That means you can watch your favorite fight no matter where you're watching it and come back to us. We'll give you the coverage. We'll give you the breakdown. You've got us breaking down fights on the podcast. You've got us calling the live fights. There is all things boxing and it's going to continue to grow. We're going to have more and more live events. We're going to keep giving you constant content, all things boxing, as I keep saying. You know, boxing fans, you know, we're not spoiled. We're, we'll watch any kind of fight, but when we can give you and the, the best breakdown from the best analysts and the best team in boxing, I tell you, you can't go wrong here for just $1.99 a month. It's, it's impossible to go wrong with us. All right, so let's start spoiling them with a great main event of the evening for our global launch. And, and what a main event it is, there's no question, Pauly. It features the return of two-time world champion Jean Pascal, the Haitian-born torchbearer for all of Canada. His opponent, Mong Fan Long, the top-ranked IBF light heavyweight contender. Tonight, Mong Fan Long is fighting for his nation under a spotlight brighter than any Chinese boxer has ever experienced. He has said, people look at Chinese boxers with the impression of them all being under featherweight. I am here to change that. And to do so, he has to defeat the man who has held a world championship not once, but twice, the former WBA light heavyweight champion, also the WBO, IBO ring, and lineal light heavyweight title holder, Jean Pascal, 
who represented his country of Canada back in the 2004 Olympic Games. So it is the return, not the comeback, Roy, as we know of Jean Pascal. Your mentorship, your friendship with Jean is well documented. What should we expect from the 39-year-old tonight? Well, he's always very explosive. He's always in a very entertaining fight. He's the type of guy that is made for pro box because he doesn't have fights that are not entertaining. No matter who he fights, no matter what level that fighter may be on, he's going to find a way to make it entertaining for the fans. My apologies to you, Antonio. To, to begin our, our global launch with a matchup of light heavyweights, one is orthodox, the other is southpaw. You can't relate to that at all, can you? Most definitely I can. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, in my career, southpaws gave me problems. Eric Harding, you know, Chad Dawson. So for whatever reason, me looking at that mirror didn't really work well for me. But Mung has an opportunity tonight to defeat a home, like basically in Canada, a, a household name and with China watching on I mean this could be major if we have a, a upset win tonight over Pascal and, and so he would consider it Antonio an upset win for Wong Fan Long in the big big bright lights in China Pauly this is truly a special moment for a Chinese boxer. It really is. You know, it gives him a chance to put himself on the map first and foremost uh, with an opportunity to fight an ex-world champion, fighting a fighter who is known and resonates with the sport of boxing for his generation, which is Jean Pascal. But it also gives us gives him a chance to kind of shine the spotlight on the nation of China and their professional boxing output now. You know, you think about China, you think about, you know, Zhu Ximing, you think about recent fighters, but again, you don't think about the bigger guys, somebody like Meng Feng Long, who now has an opportunity to not only make his name bigger by taking on a, such a big name in John Pascal, but he may be getting him at the right time to where if you get this win, people will, will, will no longer wonder who this undefeated guy from China is. They're going to know who Mang Feng Long is. And it has been a long time since he has been able to be home with his family. Over a year, Mang Feng Long says, I have never been more prepared. Tonight, the quarterfinals of our last chance tournament. And we will talk about what a last chance is all about. It's about the opportunity to come back and try again. The opportunity to be back in the spotlight for top prospects who for one reason or another stumble in or out of the ring. Well, they're back and they have a great opportunity tonight. Like Antonio Moran and Jeffrey Torres, Mexico City's Antonio Moran, 26 wins, 19 knockouts, a fighter who has been in tough. His opponent, 25-year-old Puerto Rican Jeffrey Torres, who in his last three fights has finished his opponent twice in the first, once in the second. Another one of our matchups features Michael Dutchover and Clarence Booth, the West Texas Warrior, a tenaciously tough throwback, known to be ultra-aggressive. Michael Dutchover meeting Mr. St. Pete, Clarence Booth, a street-tough late bloomer, riding a six-fight win streak, five of those victories coming by knockout. Kendo Castaneda and Sonny Fredrickson. Kendo Tremendo proudly representing his hometown of San Antonio, Texas. He possesses a charming, upbeat character. He also comes ready to rumble. Sonny Fredrickson, 21 wins, 14 by knockout. The Toledo native is here to lead by example and show his four children, all under age 10, what perseverance is all about. And our final quarter, final matchup is Jameen Wong, an elite athlete who has been training right here at ProBox TV headquarters alongside the man we spoke of, Mong Fan Long, who will be in our main event. His opponent, the Southpaw from St. Pete, Joseph Fernandez, seven and one in his last eight fights. His last four wins have come by knockout. So there you have it. We begin with the elite eight tonight. They will then become the final four and the last two to battle will have a spotlight that they deserve to earn once again. In other words, this is their last chance. Roy, you always talk about hunger, desire, and, and feeling like your back is against the wall. You expect these prospects to come out and leave it all in the ring. Yeah, they have to. They have no other choice, really, because this might be the last, last chance for most of them. So when you say last chance, I mean, it sounds devastating enough when you just say last chance, but when you say it may be your last 
even last chance, that puts you in a very desperate situation, a must-win situation. That makes it very interesting for all the viewing audience. Antonio, if, if, if someone does not fight with all of his heart tonight, that is going to be very surprising to you, isn't it? Yes, because, you know, with, with their backs against the wall and they having meeting an impressive win, some of these guys are coming off three, four losses in a row. But right, what I like right. about the tournament is parity. All these guys are probably evenly matched 50-50. We really don't know who's going to come out on top. And also, all these guys have a story. They tasted a little success early on in their career. They ran into some speed bumps and some bump ropes. Now, they're back evenly now. Now they got a chance to see who really belongs on top of these eight guys. Yep, all the top prospects means good fighters, and it's our mantra here, and that should bring us great fights. Yeah, well, you know what? At one time, these guys were all looked at with as guys with promising futures. For one reason or another, it fell apart for them. And listen, Antonio mentioned sometimes some couple of these guys may have a couple of a couple of uh, uh, losses in a row. Uh, they may have run off a string of losses. But the thing is this. The thing is this. When you are in a situation when you become an opponent, when you take a loss or two, you wind up having to take fights on short notice, yes. you wind up having to take fights outside of your weight class, situations that can create other losses, can pick up that momentum. So by being in this position, they, it's a position they've always felt they can be in where if they win this tournament, they can up, up, bring, up, bring back that upside to themselves. But they've got to win the tournament. But they're also getting this opportunity with plenty of time to train at a weight class that's prime for them it's the opportunity that they've been looking for. Because if they say, okay, I want my prospect, I'm, I'm a guy that deserves this. Well, now you've got your opportunity. Yes. Now you can prove it against guys just like yourself. 50-50 fights. This is not one of those undercards where it's a prospect against a no-hope. Right. These, these are evenly matched fights. Absolutely, which is what Pro Box TV is all about. That is why this tournament is so unique. So what a night we have in store for you here in Tampa. Our main event, the return of Jean Pascal. He faces Mong Bang Long. And then the last chance Tonight. tournament. Eight hungry prospects who want to regain the knowledge of what path they will take to superstardom. So that's tonight. And then when we return in June, it'll be another great night of fights. And it's a title fight that we are able to present. It'll be from Kissimmee, Florida, Puerto Rican world champion, Jonathan Labamba Gonzalez makes the first defense of his WBO junior light flyweight title. He will take on 2012 Filipino Olympian and former world title challenger, Mark Anthony Baby Boy Barriga. That comes your way June 24th, but tonight, is the return of Pascal and a coming out moment for Mong Fan Long. Beautiful Tampa, Florida. Our home headquarters, Pro Box TV. We are set to launch globally and we are glad you are with us. Now, for those of you who have enjoyed the free trial, we will present these first three fights as another gift to you. But go to ProBoxTV.com and subscribe right now. Our main event later tonight, as we talked about, is a great one. The return of Jean Pascal as he takes on Mong Ban Long. We get things started with a four round super middleweight special attraction. One of our future stars, Daniel Blancas, who trains right here, coming off his professional debut and what a debut it was as he won by knockout. His opponent, Heinrich Caceres from Paraguay, fighting out of Miami, Beach, Florida.
there you see Daniel Iceman Blancus, a very aggressive style. His father, his head trainer, he also works with Mark Ferre and Asa Beard right here at the Pro Box facility. There is Asa Beard, aggressive, looked very, very good in his second round finish of Andre Graham back in March. His opponent, Heinrich Caceres. Soccer and basketball were his favorite sports. The man, he loves combat sports, does mixed martial arts, and tonight makes his professional boxing debut. 28-year-old Heinrich Caceres. Our tale of the tape for our first fight of the night, the 21-year-old from Milwaukee, much taller, but look at the reach. The reach is identical. His opponent, Heinrich Caceres, is seven years his elder. For the official introductions of our first fight of the night, let's get it over or take a look at our fight rules. 10-point bus system. Three judges will score the bout. No standing eight count. Three knockdown rule not in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and a fight is official after four rounds. Our fight rules here this evening under the commission in Florida. Official introduction time, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our first bout this evening is scheduled for four rounds in the super middleweight division and features Pro Box TV's future stars. Your referee in charge is Michael DeJesus. Introducing two first fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the camouflage trunks. He weighed in at 167.8 pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut, originally from Paraguay, now fighting out of Miami Beach, Florida. Please welcome Enrique Caceres. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red with green. He weighed in at 166.4 pounds. His record, one win, no losses, with that win coming by way of knockout from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is Daniel Iceman Blanca. Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver, Paulie Molinacci, the weight is officially over. Enrique Caceres and Daniel Blancas, super middleweight fight, scheduled for four rounds. Here we go! It's time to fight. Blancas, a lot of power. Blancas, a young man who you see training here pretty much every day, Roy. Yeah, he's one of the better uh, experienced guys for being so young. He had a great, illustrious amateur career. Uh, national, several national championships. So this is what takes you in a fight like this so far ahead of your opponent. Your opponent does not really have an amateur background. He's trying to learn on the job. Daniel Blancas is a guy who has a deep amateur background and it showed very much so in his very first pro fight. 6'4". You know about being a taller fighter, Antonio Tarver. But man, if he can utilize that reach and that frame, he's going to be dangerous very long. Yeah, you can see him right now. Uh, controlling the distance, but uh, I'm surprised that Enrique has really came into this fight a little bit composed. When you look at, he only has four fights MMA, you would think that he would be all over the place right now, but he's coming out and, and showing some patience and letting this fight come to him. So I, I'm surprised at seeing that right now. <laughs> yeah, he's and, almost, he yeah, Pauly, he, uh, sorry, Pauly, he has finished two of his victories, though, one with a big punch, one with a kick. So he does have some stand-up yeah, skills. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, he, he does have skills, but it's almost like he's trying to uh, sucker in Blancas a little bit. You know, Blancas maybe have not expected uh, such a patient approach by Caceres. I mean, for Caceres, he's basically got nothing to lose. You know, he's, he's coming in as the, the guy who's set up against Blancas, but he's not, he's not exactly jumping in, jumping in and, uh, and being reckless. 
good body shot from Blancas. Also, I thought it was interesting. Casetas came out southpaw for about two seconds. I, then, I, <laughs> I had to look down right on the bio and double check, Polly. <laughs> And you gotta give Casadas a lot of credit to accept a fight with a guy like Blanc because it's really crazy. On you just, I mean, you don't even have a real amateur background in boxing, and you fight this guy like a 12-time national champion. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. With over 200 amateur bouts, Roy, and also a man who has worked with two-time super middleweight champion David Benavides. When you look at the frame of Blancas, you can see why Blancas was a good man for Benavides to work with Antonio. Yes, most definitely, size-wise, and man, you cannot, oh, that was a good body shot. You cannot uh, buy that type of experience, working with a guy like David Benavidez. That's going to carry, you know, throughout his young career, and he's going to learn and be a better fighter for it. These future stars are the few fighters that are signed here at Pro Box. Another body shot, that time with the right. Final 15 seconds of round number one. So they're able to live, train, they're able to, to live the life, Paulie, and Blanc is taking full advantage of it. Yeah, he sure is. You know, he's had the busier first round. Uh, he's, he's made the fight in the first round. But Caceres, I think even Blanc was a little bit surprised that Caceres approached in the first round. Not a very active approach. I remember seeing Blanc as debut not long ago. We, we were here for it. And, and uh, he had a much livelier guy uh, in that debut. Uh, this time around, Caceres much more patient. We'll see how he opens up in the second round. His father, Ignacio. Mark Ferre, Ace of Beard, both working here on a daily basis with our future stars and many others. Blancas has said straight out, Roy, that it, it's, it's a dream come true to have you and Antonio and Pauly come in the gym every week and talk to him. And, and he's a guy who is embracing it. I would think any guy would be silly not to, but they had said that he embraces the time he gets to spend with you. Yes, yeah, a beautiful thing is like I spent time in the gym early in my career with Sugar Ray Leonard. Yep. And it carried me throughout my entire professional career some things that Sugar Ray Leonard taught. So when you spend time in the gym with guys like us, I mean, how could you not love that? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, good shot. Yeah, good, good shot. Counter. We counter right hand over the top of the jab. Yeah, I top of jab. See, Caceres was just using the same jab over and over again. Eventually, if you don't mix up the rhythm, a guy like Blancas will get the timing. Yeah, and Blancas in his first fight, he felt like he came out that first round a little bit more tentative. Yep. Well, this time he came out a little bit more poised and got behind that jab. I think we see much more improvement from Daniel even from that first fight. Oh, absolutely. You know, he's more warmed into the, the pro game. You know, that those pro debut jitters kind of get you a little tight, but now he's he's sort of falling into a rhythm even in this in this fight. As he keeps going back to that left hook to the body, I'm curious if it's gonna pay dividends for him at any point. Well, I'm gonna keep real with y'all. That first fight, he had no other choice but to bear down the fight. That dude came out yeah. there yeah. and he is yeah. yeah. You understand yeah. me? Yeah. Had he not fought like that, he may not have won that fight. Yeah. That dude came out there to get him in that first fight. Yeah. And when you, you say that, when you say that, Roy, that's the type of uh, experience that Daniel was able to build on in that first fight. You know, but coming into this fight with a guy with four MMA fights, I just don't think he can learn or build from experience yeah. from fighting a guy like this. But I'm surprised well, that he's kept it. Yeah, boxing yeah, instead of yeah, MMA. So exactly. Far. And the guy is so poised that it's making him have to take his time. Yeah. Uh, this guy is not, 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 not no weak opponent. He's very smart. And he's kind of waiting for Dane to make mistakes so he can capitalize. He just, Dane is not giving him the opportunity, which exactly. is good for it. Trying to step into oh, a good punch there. Right. Blanc is able to counter again. Daniel gets good torque through those hips all the way from the canvas, like right there, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And he's been able to find that a home for that counter right hand over the top of the jab in this round. He's starting to get the timing down a little bit of Casares. And Roy made a good point. I mean, he had to fight hard in, that, in his pro debut, and I think that's why he was so surprised yeah. at the approach of this opponent. I mean, he went from a super lively pro debut opponent to a guy who's very conservative in his approach in his second pro fight. But he's starting to open him up now. I mean, he's starting to get through, punch at different angles, go to the body, go to the head, and mix it up very well. And I'd love to see any young fighter finish those combinations by digging to the body. And so far, he got that down pat. Just like that, he's going to look down and come up. And just as I was about to say, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, here he goes Mexicans. to the body with the right. Mexicans know a thing or two about body shots anyway. You better believe you know? it. 
Yeah, his father did say on that first fight, much to your point, Antonio, that his son looked a little tight in the first. Before relaxing, second round, he looked better, more like himself. Did what he always does. Here in the second, he's opened up a little bit, but it looks like we're going to make our way to the third. And I like how he's touching a little bit now because it's harder to get a knockout against a guy who's kind of just only there to survive. And Caceres hasn't really been active. He's almost in a survival mode, just taking what, he, what was really there. Otherwise, he's not going to open up and take his guard away from his face. And so I like how Blanca started touching here to try to open him up a little bit. And Pauly, compared to MMA grubs, Enrique's feeling spoiled right now <laughs> to have those gloves yeah. to protect himself. Yeah, you can get, get that high guard and it may block a little bit you more. You got that right. ProBoxTV.com. Live TV, latest updates. Get your credentials to download the app. So everybody, go to ProBoxTV.com first, and you will be our next loyal viewer. And I got news for you. We're going to give that loyalty right back. Third round, our first fight of the night, our future star, Daniel Blancas, Iceman. This is scheduled for four rounds. <laughs> Round three, red trunks for Blancas and the camouflage trunks for Enrique Caceres. Enrique is putting up one hell of a fight considering his background and where he come from. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not ordinary that you see a guy with his type of background show this kind of poise in an actual boxing match. And he tried to sneak a one-two in there a couple of times. He got a good right hand if he can land it. I mean, if you go to Paraguay, you, you have to go Juan Carlos Jimenez, right? I mean, fought Roberto Duran. Good defense with the arms right there. Just these body shots are kind of breaking him down. Oh, Good shot. There's that counter again. Well, Caceres got a, a, he has a chin and he's tough. Yes, he is. Tough as nails. And, and Blancas has figured it out the way through the defensive minded Caceres. He's forcing Caceres to have to throw back if he's going to stay in this fight. Blancas doing some really smart work to the body, is what I like. That body discipline is very good. Nice combination by Blancas. Again, man, he is digging that left hand into the rib cage of his opponent. Yeah, he's sitting out on his shots right now, really looking for this KO. And, and Caceres needs to maybe start doing some little catch and shoots there. You know, the, the Blancas is starting to dig those body shots hard. He's leaving a little bit of daylight. If you're blocking the body shots, yeah. there's a nice attempt to counter red hand by Caceres. And you know, he, he, if, if, if he, those body shots are digging in, if you're blocking them, you gotta come back with something just to, eliminate a, a lot of the enthusiasm Blanca is starting to get when, when he throws these hard shots. Good part of shots. And Roy, you mentioned earlier, go low with the left, come over the top with the right. Blanca has tried to do that earlier. Yeah, he's very smart. He's using a good uh, 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 different variety of punches. I like the variety he's using. He's using the overhand rights, the uppercuts, the body shot, he's using everything. And you gotta love it when you see a young fighter who knows how to pull out this type of a variety. Enrique really turning it on here. Yeah, he's starting to really use that uppercut heavy. Once he gets his opponent's arms to come down because of those body shots, Daniel's taking advantage of it, Antonio. Most definitely, but this guy got a heart, man. Enrique is really strong in there. He's trying, and he's not giving up. I love you it. You feel me? And so a lot of times we don't see this from guys that come from an MMA background. Not at all. And a lot of, not just that, I mean, not only is he, is he, is he got hard, but he's also got a great body language. You can't tell if this is there. affecting him, you know, because, so God, Blancas is kind of looking at him like, yo, what, are you feeling these shots? You know, <laughs> Blancas is almost, he takes some steps back instead of just continuing the assault, because he's, he's wondering, you know, if he's going to punch himself out trying to stop this guy. No reaction from Caceres at all in terms of uh, emotionally being able to read him. He's calm. So what on paper may have seemed like an opportunity in which Blancas wouldn't gain more ring experience is turning out to be a challenge as we listen into Blancas' corner.
some of his handy work there, Paulie. Yeah, and that was that counter right hand that we were talking about. Blanca started to find a home for that in that second round. Started to get the timing down of Caceres. And the reason for that was because Caceres was throwing the same kind of jab over and over again. There's a, another nifty move by Blanca as he used that lead hand to kind of knock away the, the high guard of Caceres before throwing back and throwing the right hand. Although Caceres there got a little lively back and got himself into the into an exchange. And there it is again, that knocking down that lead hand when it's the high guard and coming around with the right hand. We I used to see a member of Fernando Fernando Vargas used to do that. First time I noticed mm -hmm. it in the, when he fought I Quarte, Vargas was doing that a lot. Knocking down that high guard with the lead glove and coming with the right hand. Fourth and final round of our first fight of the night, our Future Star series. Blancas has been dominant, but Enrique is going nowhere. And the back of the trunks, Roy Blanc has got the 414 representing his hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yep. Big big city for boxing. Yeah. Uh, the great Jerry McClellan came from there. I watched his son fight a couple weeks ago. He made his uh, second fight, I think, of his career. So it was pretty interesting. So you got to love Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You got to be tough if you're living up there in that snow. That's where the G-Man yeah. came from. That is it. Now, we know it's, it's more than one way to skin a cat. I like what I'm seeing from Blancas right now, the aggression. But in order to get this knockout that he's looking for, he may need to counter punch. Maybe yeah. let Enrique yeah. open yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. You feel me? Instead was of being so aggressive and I work off your defense. I was going to say, Antonio, when he's throwing everything so hard, maybe throw something light so it sucks out uh, a an attempted counter by Casares, and then you start countering the counter. Because right now you throw everything so hard, Casares keeps his hands home and gets very, very defensive. And then waits for you to stop punching. Maybe you punch yourself out, and he tries to jump on you like, like he just attempted there again. Good try. Great try. So I'll tell you, man, it's a good learning fight for Blancas. Of he's, course he's not, gonna, he's not gonna lose this fight, but you know what? <laughs> learning that, learning how to skin a cat, like you said, Antonio. You gotta figure out different ways to skin a cat. Oh, okay. good counter. Ooh, good that was a shot. sharp counter. Good timing there. And now, that's what you said, the counter is though. Open that up came the counter. off the movement, Paulie. That came right off the movement. He didn't load up. It was a punch that he didn't see. That hurt. <laughs> He didn't send him up because either. Yeah. I can promise you not seeing him. The whole fight. <laughs> oh, good. He's game now. He's as game as they come. You got to take your head off to him. This is the kind of fighter that you said if he had some real technical experience and some training. He'd be a problem. Maybe he might be a problem. Yeah. Oh, good up. Man, I'll tell you what, Blancas, the, the thing I know, Roy, that you love about this kid, angles, different punches, putting things together, oh. staying unpredictable. I like his punch variety. Like I said before, he's a very shot. good selection of punches for a young pro boxer. Most guys don't have the, uh, the, the, the tenacity nor the knowledge to use the variety that Blancas uses. Now, one thing Blancas could, go back and work on. He's great with throwing one punch, but let's get two or three punches yep. in, com in combination fashion. Yeah. Maybe you land that right hand and come back with that yeah. left hook, yeah, he, you can call some Yeah, damage. he's done a good job of knocking down that lead hand and trying to come with the right hand, but you know what? You know that you're gonna knock down that lead hand, come with a right hand, hook, right hand. I'll tell you what, Enrique just represented his home country of Paraguay very well. Four rounds, they go the distance. Wow. And man, he took some damage. And this is what our, our, our captain, <laughs> Gary Jones, is all about. These type of fights, 50 50. Yeah, I tell you what, man, Casares didn't show up to lay down. You know, even for our future stars. You know, we want here at Pro Box, we look to, you know, get them opponents where they're going to learn and then not just run right through them. You know, I, I tell you, this is the second time in a row I see Palancas with a, a lively guy who is not going to go away that easily. Casares was less active than Blancas' pro oh, yeah. debut guy, but nonetheless, very crafty, yeah, maybe yeah, from that MMA background, had a lot of toughness to him, and he wasn't just going away that easily, and he never went away. He went the distance here, may have lost on points, but a timely, timely experience from Blancas. And on paper, I couldn't see this fight being this contested, you know, because of his background, but man, I was surprised, and again, hats off to Gary Jones for making this type of 50-50 fight. But Roy, you will take that 12 minutes of tape.
That's that's 12 minutes of learning right there, right? Yeah, and you got to factor something else in that these two guys don't like to factor in that much. They forget that one thing neither of us three have right now is called condition. <laughs> Throwing right. them three, four, and five punches after the guy like that takes yeah. condition. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you're that tired, the fourth round from all the work he's done, He's kind of wore down, so yeah. he thought one trying to get him out, but he's very fatigued at that, at that point. That's what it looks sometimes. I thought Cáceres was doing. Like yeah. Maybe he's waiting for him to punch himself out. Set for the official decision from Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after four hard-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Tito Wilgo, Michael Ross, and Jed O'Connor all score the bout. 40 to 36 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Daniel Iceman Blanca. Iceman is 2 and 0. And let's hear it for Enrique Caceres. And I agree with Mark Lichtenfeld. Let's hear it for Enrique Caceres. He, he hung his arms over the ropes and gave us a big smile, Paulie, and he earned your guys' respect, undoubtedly. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a guy who didn't just show up for a check, showed up to, to fight, to, you know, to do his part in, in uh, testing Blancas in, in the way that he can, in his, the best way that he can. Also, I want to let everybody at home know that if you're watching us on YouTube, order the app, get the rest of this card. It's going to be a dynamite card. Uh, you're going to get these first couple of fights on YouTube, but get that 199 a month in there and join us at Pro Box TV. Join us for the rest of this card and all the great stuff we give you. We're going to give you the next two because we love our fans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's going to be time for less than a cup of coffee, 199 a month. And, and again, Roy, you, you had said earlier, you like the way he mixes it up. It comes from different angles. Yes, I love the different variation that uh, Blank has attacked with. It, it really makes me happy to see a guy who knows how and when to use what particular punches. Blankers is very smart. He's not a 12-time national champion for no reason. And he kept calming there, man. I mean, he, he got a guy who, you know, who wouldn't go away. He would, you see, he was trying to mix it, the right hands, went around over around the guard, straight over the top, and sometimes just straight directly on the counter. Uh, good, 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 good thinking fight for Blancas, and uh, he'll take a lot from it. So next up, another one of our future stars in Josiah Shirley. Then we begin the last chance tournament. Moran and Torres, Dutch over Booth, Castaneda, Fredrickson, Wong, Fernandez, and in our main event of the evening, a 12 round light heavyweight matchup between the two time world champion, Jean Pascal, and one of China's best, Long Fan Long. Set now for Josiah Shirley, another young up and coming fighter. 4 0, all four victories coming by knockout. Two in the second, two in the fourth. His opponent, Miguel Perez Ispora, trying to get back to his winning ways. Antonio, tell us about Josiah Shirley. Josiah, Josiah Shirley is one of the, another hot prospect here in our future star in our future star series from my hometown of Orlando, Florida. So you know I'm pulling for this kid. Uh, just a young guy has a, a, a great deal of amateur experience, but definitely uh, has a style of a pro. You know, uh, very slick on his feet, throw combination punches, uh, don't get hit a lot, Fast. and his, his speed. I think his speed stands out, but I want to see him grow and continue to in, uh, to uh, elevate his game. And his opponent, Paulie in uh, Ispora, he's a guy who has fought. Definitely. He's been in tough. Right? And I was just going to say, Goldie, man, <laughs> and Antonio, you know, singing the praise of Josiah Shirley, rightfully so, but Gary Jones, who runs Pro Box TV, doesn't want any gimmies here, man. So Josiah Shirley, you know, there's 4-0, 4 KOs. Miguel Perez, I suppose, not only is 12 and 12 with two draws, it's 26 pro fights, a 26 fight veteran. You don't usually see a guy with 26 pro fights yep. fighting a guy with four fights unless his level of opposition has been absolutely horrendous. And instead, Asporo has not had a horrible level of opposition. He's fought Devin Haney, he's fought 
Isaac Pitbull Cruz, guys who are top level fighters on the world stage right now. And he's not been stopped by these guys either. So uh, a difficult guy to stop, a difficult guy to deal with. Miguel Perez Aisporo is a durable guy with a lot of experience. And for a guy like Josiah Shirley, who's got just four fights, it's a test. Maybe the first test. test of his professional boxing career. Not to mention in those 12 wins, he has eight KOs. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Big reach advantage for 21-year-old Josiah Shirley, his opponent a decade his elder, as we get set for this six-round lightweight matchup. Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, want to remind you there's absolutely no video recording and posting it to social media or streaming tonight's event. Also, please no flash photography. That is for the fighter's safety, so please no flash photography. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is scheduled for six rounds in the lightweight division and is part of our Future Stars series. Your referee in charge is Dennis Debon. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks, he weighed in at 142 pounds with a record of 12 wins, 12 losses, two draws, eight wins by knockout from Culiacan, Mexico. Please welcome Miguel Angel Aispuro. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with silver, he weighed in at 140.6 pounds with a perfect professional record. Four wins, no losses, all four wins coming by way of knockout from Orlando, Florida. He is Josiah Kitchari. Okay, gentlemen, I expect a good, clean fight in here. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Come out boxing at the bell. Good luck. Josiah Shirley. Extensive amateur career, 56 and 2. As an amateur, 4 and 0. Oh. As a young professional, all four wins by knockout, taking on a man a decade older in Miguel Perez Ispora. Here we go. It is time to fight. White and silver trunks for the kid, Josiah Shirley, his opponent in the red and white, Miguel Perez Ispora. We know one thing, as the guys talked about, Roy, much like we just saw a moment ago, this will not be an easy out for young Josiah Shirley. No, it won't, but it gives us an opportunity, opportunity to see how much he's learned, see how much he's matured in those four fights, because when you get a guy in front of you, a veteran that can take the punishment like this guy can, you have to pull out all your tricks, because he has tricks of his own. Although he doesn't have a good record, he still has a lot of experience. Now you have to put what you know on the line against a guy who's been in with the top guys. You see, and you're seeing already little things that you, a, a guy in his first five fights a lot of times doesn't see. You see Nice Porto giving some feints, stepping back on the defense and just being having the approach. And, and he's making Shirley miss. So Aspuro, you can see, is a capable fighter. Shirley's going to have to think his way through this one. Shirley looks like he has a, a, a tremendous size advantage over his opponent. I like the way he's coming out, flicking that jab, using his distance. Like I say, He's a classic boxer. Nice counter up. With some power, with 4 0, with four knockouts. But we want to we want to know if this power is real. Everybody come out early Run, in their career, in, knocking up. everybody out. But yep. is this power real? We yep. should find out tonight. Oh, and those body shots like that. That's what he. That's that's going to be a key if he's going to get the stoppage tonight. Because Ispudo is a durable guy. But the power to the body is real, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how we, we were here. That's how he finished Giovanni Bennett, right? Yeah, exactly. But that, the two shots he just threw had very bad intent on them. <laughs> Indeed. He might have that bright, smiling personality, yes. but that snappy jab, he likes to double up in those body shots. Th those aren't nice at all. Very entertaining fighter. Loves to put on a show. Ooh. Nice counter by Isporo. And Isporo not, not afraid to, to trade, and neither is Shirley. Good exchange from both guys. You still got to be defensively responsible when you in close like that. You just can't open up and load up because a guy can sneak one in on you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I liked. I liked about Shirley in that exchange. Very responsible with his hands. Good hand positioning. Held them tight in there in that exchange. 
Second straight six round fight for young Josiah Shirley. With the experience he has, I think this is the best thing for him. Four rounds does not no good. He's fought right. three rounds for so long. I mean, he has optimal experience at three rounds. Why not go to six? Nice Spudo now turning into a salpo. Round one in the books. Good round. Nice him up. What you just told me? Got out of the way. Alex Lopez, his trainer. Sí, bonito, sí. Mídalo, mídalo con el jab. Ya te mostró todo, güey. Ya te mostró todo. De dentro ya te mostró todo. De afuera ya te mostró todo. Get a little more aggressive. Behind the jab. When you make sure you hit him with the jab first. Okay. Step in with the jab. Okay. And you could certainly see, as we go to the corner of Ispora, the veteran experience of a guy who's been in there for many years, Roy, but also against some of the best in the world. Of course, he's seen it all. So being that he's seen it all, this is nothing new to him. It's just a matter of how long can he deal with it, you know? Or can he sneak something in between something is what he really wants to do. And Round he, two. You got a guy 31 years old, that's that manpower. That, you know what I mean? He ain't gonna point. just go away. Yep. So he's gonna have to break him down, then get him out of there. Yeah, and, he, and, and you can see he doesn't have the mentality of uh, just a, a complete opponent. He's, uh, he's punching back. You can see this is a guy who is, gets picked, chosen to test your prospect. He's a guy who fights back, punches in between your shots, and if you're not responsible, he, might, he can clip you. And again, he's coming out south, although now he's ready yeah. it again. Smile on the face of Ispora, Pauly, and he's switching up that stance. Good shot. I, tell you, I, like, I like Shirley's patience, though. He's not, he's not getting ahead of himself. He's taking what Ispora has given him Let and him picking him off with some speed. I would like to see a couple of feints from Shirley. We've seen Isporta use some feints, but yeah. Isporta sometimes setting traps by waiting, looking to get Shirley to come up short. Both of them exchange good body shots there. Yeah, one good body shot deserves another, I guess. I think Shirley might be smothering himself a little bit from the distance. There's exchange of jabs. Isporta landed a good jab there, but... Good hook. Uh, and Ispora coming off a fight against the 6-0 guy, 17-0, oh, 14-0, 16-0, 13-0, Pauly, <laughs> at the wow. Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Yeah, that's what I, and that's what I mean about Ispora. He, he, he gets in there with everybody. You know, he's got a 500 record, 26 professional fight veteran, and is a capable guy. He knows his way around the ring. Caught Shirley with a good hook of about 20 seconds ago. Shirley took it very well and is answering. To be honest with you, he's really not far from these guys that are in this last chance tournament. Yeah. The only difference is yeah. he's fought so many undefeated fighters that he has a lot more losses than most of them have. But he's one of those type of guys you can tell that had it at one point, but somewhere got lost or got mixed in the shuffle down the line and became that B opponent. Yep. And he's comfortable in this, smiling when he's of making course. his guy miss. I mean, you can see the veteran savvy in him. Yeah, when you've been in the ring with guys like Haney and guys that are champions today, Fighting a guy four and oh, he made oh. That was a little, a little bit. I like that call by the ref. I don't think it was the hook. A lot of times the lefty righty matchup, you, you, your hook goes around the guy's neck and winds up pushing down. We'll probably get a chance to see the replay in between rounds. Yeah, because in my book, I would have called it a knockdown because a lot of contact refs was made to the head. Yeah, a lot of a lot of refs would have. <laughs> I think I think he, the hook may have gone slightly around the head. I want to see the replay. I score likes talking to him. Body shot from Josiah Shirley. Final 10 seconds of round two. Icebor is here to fight. Shirley got to shorten up that right hand just a little bit when he throws it. He's starting to loop it around. That's what I coming. meant when I say he was smothering himself. Yeah. He's in too close. Yeah. Maybe, maybe throw it straight instead of throwing it around the guard. Yeah. It's I, I, it feels like Icebor is starting to see it. Yeah. When you get in the inside, hit him with the chopping right hand. All right? Short, short, short one. Let's see if we get that. Right. That was a good right. hook by Sporta. Yeah, Shirley took it well, though. I got to tell you, not only did he take it well, but he, he answered back 
in the 30 seconds, subsequent 30 seconds after. We didn't get a look at what brought Isporo down, though. We get a look at him down there. i like to see what actually brought him down, though. And there he's, he's going down again. Yeah, well, we know. We definitely know he went down, but <laughs> it'd be good to see what brought him down. And we definitely know it was a punch. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. But do we know it was a punch that landed or did it go around his neck, Roy? Oh, that's, no, it landed. That's what, that's what I want to see. My replay guys got to give him a little bit more yeah. money because they ain't doing too good right there. But. <laughs> so as a young fighter evolves, Roy, I know that you will watch very closely adjustments that he can make from round to round. Of course. You're going to watch the adjustments, and you got to watch how careless he gets. That's the biggest thing about young fighters. They can't get careless too quick because the worst thing in the world is a wounded animal. So you get a guy hurt or feeling like he's about to lose, he's going to throw his best desperation like shots at you. If you get careless and one of those catch you, it could be good night. And that's another thing, Roy. We make a good point because surely the shots he's landed in this fight have, have taken out his first four opponents. Absolutely. Now you got a guy in front of you who's not, not only is he not going anywhere, but he, oh, good shot. It's a good, speaking of shots that have taken out his first four opponents, there's another one. And Isporto's not going anywhere, so it's easy for a young fighter to kind of lose patience and start to punch himself out. So I've, I've liked the approach Shirley's taken. He's really fought this fight like a pro. Let's see if he stays patient enough while knowing how to step on the gas when it's time. All right, Spurs only been stopped three times in his 12 career losses, and one of those times shot. was against Devin Haney. Came in the fifth round, putting together body shots, trying to keep his opponent in the corner. Really like, oh, body shot got in. Yeah, it hurt him too. Really like the aggression of Shirley is showing right now. I, one punch at a time. I still like to see these guys put combinations Let together. Go, Let him go. And you don't have to throw every punch hard. Yeah, our sport knows how to weather the storm, that's for sure. Good, good, good shots punch, by Shirley. Keep him up. Keep him up. He's Low grinsing. Blow. I don't know if that was a hand shot, but Shirley is grinsing. And, yeah. Oh, another low blow. Stop. 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 Okay, he's yeah. going to lose a point. Yeah. Aspuro's been on. throwing low all night. Yeah. That's probably what it was. He got hit yeah. with a, a low yeah. blow. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. Stop hitting him low. I don't want to I don't wanna have to disqualify him. Time in. And the, the referee makes a perfect point because he had warned I score uh, multiple times before deducting the point there. Oh, good shot right over the overhand shot by Shirley there. Yeah, Shirley getting to him now. Oh. Smacking a little bit. He's got to turn those knuckles over. Yeah, he got to close his fist. He, and be careful here. That's where he's got to be careful. Counter. Big swing and a miss from I score up. He got to. Yeah. boy ain't slapping though, so. He got to turn that knuckle over, man. I, those punches look like they're open hand almost. And a lot of times you hear those big thumping, thumping yeah. sounds. Those are slaps for the yeah. most part. There's he is that, that was one right hand down the In the, the third. Middle. So you see, he finally threw his right hand Three. down the middle. And he got it through. He knocked Isporo into the ropes. I don't mind Shirley throwing those loopy right hands, especially when Isporo is southpaw. But I'd like to see some of them be straight, just so he mixes the trajectory. Straight, straight punches. That'll avoid all the slapping. If you throw your punches straight, turn that knuckle over, you hit with the fist. Big round three, RJ, for Josiah Shirley. There's that combination of the body, head. Now he's putting punches together like you like, Roy. They put punches together. I just like to see him, like Tarver said, do it with the knuckles instead of the inside of the knuckles. The inside of the knuckles is not the hardest like that. If those land, they're not going to knock anybody out. Those are what we call steps, so we need you to turn that knuckle over and not that not that palm, you know? Like right there, see those shots? Now, that was a good shot, but that not, that's not a good shot. The right hand is a good shot, but the left hook. Is hitting with inside of the palm. It's not really well, a, a, the, the most powerful shot. Well, if anything, champs, it, it's very disrespectful to get slapped like that, you know, all, all over the place that round. So let's see how I sporto responds this round. <laughs> round four. Second straight fight scheduled for six rounds for Josiah Shirley. 
He's never gone deeper than this, the fourth round. His last fight, he finished Bennett, Giovanni Bennett, at 231 of the fourth. I like what I see in him, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sure he doesn't get careless here. And Shirley making one of those mistakes I do see Shirley making is a little bit like Blancas was, and it's common for a young fighter throwing everything hard. Low when like, you can't get a guy out of there, you just want to get him out of there so badly that you start throwing everything hard. And Shirley has to be careful. I Ispudo, Ispudo, again, he's a veteran. He's, he's not going to let himself get bullied, and it's where Shirley has to stay calm here. And Ispudo's going to play these games. And he's complaining of a low shot. Stop, stop. Okay, stop. 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 Okay, you were holding him, okay? It was your fault. It was your fault. Okay. It was your fault. He's cursing him out in Spanish. Hey, the referee's to give him a shot in English. I spoiled his cursing the ref in Spanish. The ref doesn't understand. No, no Spanish. And I think the only one sitting here that understands it is Polly. What was he saying, Polly? Well, maybe we don't want to know what he was saying. I tell you, Shirley, you got to be careful. He doesn't want to get sucked into the wrong kind of fight. He's been, he's been fighting a very disciplined fight. And they're coming in very close to a headbutt, like there. Yeah. He got to step in behind that back foot, yep. not lunge in. And that jab. There we go. 50-50 matchups. This is what we want. And this is what smother. we're getting. And as Puto knows how to smother Shirley Good shot. himself, too. Damn. Good catch and shoot there by oh. Shirley. <laughs> I mean, by uh, yeah, by Shirley. As Puto takes some good, man. The veteran from Sinaloa, and now he's angry. Body shots cure anger real quick. <laughs> there you go, and right on cue. <laughs> that was a double, double jab left hand by Ispudo. Ah, there, uh, there you go, body, body head from young Josiah Shirley. See how angry he was, but now he's smiling. Yep. Those body shots cure that anger real quick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Because when you smile, that usually means you just got hit hard. Exactly. <laughs> you ain't mad as you were. <laughs> mad me and don't smile. <laughs> Good jab. Both of them landed jabs, then. But he's sure fighting, though. Spirit put on a show here. He he's giving us is. what we want. I like it. Again, I hear a pro box. The prospects get don't get matched easy. Don't get no. they don't get given gimmies here. Now they get tested. And, and the test is, with all these punches being thrown. This is first six rounds. Those last two yeah. rounds are going to be very challenging. Yep. Yeah. Well, he's scheduled for six. He's finished fighters no later than the third end, or the fourth part of me, Antonio. Three. So, yeah, he's going to go to round five for the first time in his young career. Now what starts happening, you get fatigued physically, but now your mental start to play games on you. Yeah, you start I questioning yourself, why is this guy still around? And, that, and that's where he's got to be careful, because I, I sport a, like to talk trash and play mind games. <laughs> to get him out of sight. Yeah, like to suck you into the wrong kind of fight. Old veteran move. Yep. Buena reacción, eh? Buena reacción, buena reacción. Así me gusta. See the replay, we're trying to figure out why I sport was angry. Let's see. Oh, uh, the forearm to the face. Whoa. That. And there he's talking trash. I know he got a forearm a few seconds at the beginning of this replay. Good hook right hand there by Josiah Shirley. Good exchange there in general. I suppose always willing to engage in the exchange regardless. Mike Goldberg, nine-time world champion. Roy Jones Jr., five-time world champion. Antonio Tarver, and what what do you call? Are you going Magic Man Light? Is that what it is, Paul? Magic Man Light, Goldie. Magic that's Man me. Light, two-time world champion. The Magic Man, Pauli Molinaji. Round five of our second fight here on our global launch, Pro Box TV. Go to ProBoxTV.com right now. We're going to oh. give you this fight one more as an early Christmas gift, and then. We're just going to deliver over and over and over like Shirley's trying to do here in the fifth. 199 a month, $18 a year. Like Roy said in one of our promos, come on, man. 
I'm worth way more than $18 a year. <laughs> and then Polly said, whoa, Superman has spoken. <laughs> yes, he sure has. And when he speaks, you listen. There you go. You're darn right you do. I'd like to see him just drop a one, two, right off the move. Yeah. I, I, don't that's what think I, about it. Don't load up. Yep. And, and that's the thing. With that's again, the, these young fighters, they fall into that trap. When the guy's so durable, they want to get him out so badly. Especially when look at Shirley. He got four no four knockouts. You know, so he's trying to keep that exactly. a piece of him because he's so young. He's trying to keep that hundred percent knockout streak alive. Good oh. shot. Way to change yeah, it that up. Was a, but that was a straight one right exactly. there. He threw it down the middle. He lands up. it. Great and, change. And up. it was a combination. He, he threw three punches then, and the third one landed. He's way ahead on the scorecards, especially with the point deduction. But Antonio, like Pauly said, a hey, you want your four and zero four knockouts. You want to be five and zero with five knockouts. Most definitely, man. That's oh, but right you want right to be the you want to be the hammer, not the nail. Exactly. But yeah, it's hard to let that that KO uh, streak go. I mean, we all want to stay undefeated with all knockouts. But right. hey, as that competition, Enrique landing a shot. As that competition gets up, you got to raise your, elevate your game as well. Yep. But this is the type of work that a, a young fighter like Shirley would definitely grow from and build. But he's in, definitely in shape because he's throwing so many hard punches. Absolutely. And this is his first six rounder, and he's he still looks fresh. I mean, this is def, definitely his conditioning is impressive. Looks really good for a first six round mm -hmm. fight. You see, I'm with Superman and two doses of magic. Pro Box TV headquarters. Main event later tonight, Jean Pascal, Meng Fan Long. Night heavyweight no. fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Now Shirley is turning southpaw. That worked at least. <laughs> now he's slapping him with the left hand too. <laughs> Good job. Sometimes you got to learn you can't knock everybody out. You just got to get the decision. <laughs> so your link to get everything is go on the web. Go to ProBoxTV.com. And that will open up the app on Apple TV. It'll open up the app on Android. It'll open up the app on, on Amazon. Roku, we're, we're getting them going, but your Fire Stick will work. You can also download the app on your mobile device, but you got to sign up at ProBoxTV.com, and it'll come your way any way you want to watch it. Yeah. Go to the website, ProBoxTV.com, guys. Live events, Future Star Series, as we see here. Behind the scenes, inside the ropes content. You've seen some of our daily podcast material, and some emotions from our big three that sit next to me. And our last chance tournament starts right after this fight. Sixth and final round. Shirley in the white and silver. I Sporo in the red and white. Roy, would it be accurate to say you want Josiah Shirley to be responsibly aggressive here in this sixth? Yeah, responsibly ag uh, aggressive, but not too aggressive. You got a good punch here in front of you. You want to take no stupid chances. You got to fight one already. Just box smartly. Don't let him win the round because you don't want to give away nothing or let him get too confident. But, you know, be smart about it because this guy is a good puncher. Yeah, and, and also at this point, you know, Shirley's realizing, you know, I'm in round six. Maybe he's a little bit fatigued. Also, as a person who has had a lot of hand problems in my career, he threw a lot of hard punches. Yeah. I wonder if his hands are sore, maybe, you know, because he's less active this round. And, um, you know, he seems like he's taking his time. It doesn't mean he's going to give the round away, because as Roy said, he's he got to be responsible and, and still keep command of the fight. I like what he's doing right now. He's sna snapping a controlling jab. Still has his mindset in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, he hasn't checked out yet. Good jab. And they're just controlling the distance, controlling the fight. He's the yeah. boss in there right now. And that's what I, exactly what I, what I like, Antonio. You know, through all the rounds, he's come out each and every round, get off the stool, and, and acted like the boss of the round. You know, against a veteran savvy guy like Aspudo, who's known to, to be durable and, and not go away that easily. Good counter by Josiah Shirley. 
took up boxing in high school. Now, for all of us, that was a long, long time ago. For <laughs> Josiah Shirley, he's 21. That was only a couple years ago. And doing amazingly well for a guy to pick it up just out of high school, you know? Yeah. Very, very impressive. Very bright future. I mean, if, if he just took it up in high school, he stayed busy with those 58 amateur fights indeed. It's really impressive. Because if it's just that many years, you can still continue to get better. Good, good combination punching. Yeah, the evolution can can be pretty magical, and the rise can be pretty steep, right? Yeah, but I'll tell you, if he's started not that long ago like this, like in high school, in high school years, he's going to continue to improve. I started boxing 16 years old. I'm telling you, you're That's still right. improving. Oh, yeah. Your style is not Ooh. completely set. Good shot there. He's got. A, he's a very talented kid. That's a lot of upside. Straight punch that Ooh. time. That's very the one you guys right have been wanting, right? Yep, right down the pipe. Final seconds of this six-round fight. And, and that's experience, but they're going to have to definitely get in the gym and work on that, closing that fist and making uh, effective punches, landing effective punches. But great job, Mr. Shirley. Very good job. Hey, both, both guys, I mean, you got to give a hand to Aspudo, too, for coming in here, doing his job, uh, you know, not, not packing it in against a tough prospect like Shirley. And just like he usually does, Aspudo goes the distance and tests out the young prospect Shirley make force him to go six rounds for the first time in his career. First him to go the distance in general yep. for the first time in his career. And when you go back and look at that tape, don't look at the things that you did great. Look at the things that you <laughs> didn't do so course, well. Always things Put improved. those on the, under the microscope mm -hmm. and get better yeah. because he can. Yeah, despite the 60-54, 60-53, because yeah, I would have lost the point, most likely that which will be the scorecards. Despite the fact you've won every round, there's still things that can be worked on. Yes, sir. And, that, and that goes, that's not even a criticism. That goes to show you the upside Josiah Shirley has to him. That's growth, too. That's growth. He told me he's the real thing. He's strong. Come on, 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 come He's saying he hits hard. He's saying Josiah hits hard. I mean, Josiah was loading up a bunch of shots. But he said, but you know what? He still couldn't knock me out. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but my favorite was when he was cursing out the ref in Spanish, man. <laughs> the ref is giving him instructions of why he's taking away a point, and he's just cursing him out. <laughs> There's a lot of referees in the sport of boxing who speak Spanish. You, you were taking a risk there. I guess he figured, look, 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 look at the referee, he didn't look like speak a guy Spanish, who speaks Spanish. You didn't say anything to the ref. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our official decision coming your way from Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after six sharp shooting rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Joanne Richard. Tito Wilgo and Michael Ross all score the belt 60 to 53 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated Josiah Kid Shirley. <laughs> Young Josiah Kid and that's Shirley for him, is five and Ice Borough. Right here. And great mutual respect shown after the fight by Ice Boro. Winner by unanimous decision, 21-year-old Josiah Kid Shirley. Take a look at some of his handiwork. Paulie, I mean, he was in there with the vet like you talked about. Yeah, yeah, he had to think his way through the fight. He had a guy who was live, and especially early on, Isputo was willing to shoot right back at anything Josiah Shirley was throwing. He wasn't really intimidated. You know what? That could have been a knockdown. Yep. Oh, you're right. It didn't land cleanly, but it, it landed enough to where hey, it could Superman have been Superman said it was a knockdown. It's yeah, a knockdown. Hey, man, that's why I, I don't argue. I, I just give the possibilities. <laughs> but a uh, uh, solid performance by Josiah Shirley. And still, he, he's talented enough to where you can look at this solid performance by Shirley against a guy, a vet with this kind of experience and this kind of durability and still see that he can get even better. But that's only a credit to Josiah Shirley and not so much a, a criticism.
and, and, and they're active. These two yeah. young guys are active. They yeah. just fought a month yep. and a half ago, so yep. keep them busy, keep them busy, and watch them And watch keeping them, them in shape because he went six rounds. First yep. time in his career, he had to go the distance and the first six rounder of his career, and he it, it did not look like he was feeling the, the, or anything. the gassing out. Yep. So 12 rounds of tape for Blancas, 18 minutes of tape for the youngster, Josiah Shirley, 12 minutes of tape, sorry, not 12 rounds, but our main event of the evening is scheduled for 12 rounds. What a showcase, two-time champion Jean Pascal, Mong Fan Long. Up next, the last gift we are giving to you before you have to subscribe, or before you will be happy to subscribe to ProBox TV, do it at ProBoxTV.com. Antonio Moran, Jeffrey Torres will be the first two to battle in our last chance tournament there are the brackets there are the matchups for tonight and Roy like you said at the top of the show this is the last last chance last chance this guy I mean was good as Jeffrey Torres only has one loss that's pretty impressive but Moran has a lot of experience too so he's up against a very savvy vet, savvy veteran this is a great fight that's about to unfold in front of us our first matchup last chance 26-5-1 Mexican slugger Antonio Moran has been in tough. If Moran wants all the years of dripping blood and gallons of sweat in a tier or two to pay off, the 10-year pro knows he has to win this tournament. He says things are looking up with a new trainer leading the way. This could be Antonio Moran's last chance to show everybody he's somebody, not a mere contender, but a world championship level fighter all of Mexico can be proud of. Jeffrey Torres, age 25, with a 10 and one record against mid-level competition, is not a favorite to win the last chance tournament. But dismissing his chances might not be a wise play. He's a proud Puerto Rican living in Philadelphia, learning the trade and being patient, awaiting his big break. We asked Torres if this event was his last chance at getting noticed by the right people. He replied, that's how I'm looking at it. You underestimate me, you're making a big mistake. Last chance viewers will see for themselves. Our tail of the tape for this first matchup at 140 pounds. All of these fights scheduled for eight rounds. 29-year-old fighting out of Mexico City, Mexico. Will have a seven-inch reach advantage against the Puerto Rican with ties to Philadelphia. Now training out of New Haven, Connecticut. With the official introductions of our first last chance battle, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, this is our first quarterfinal bout of tonight's last chance 140 pound tournament. All four bouts of the quarterfinal bouts will be scheduled for eight rounds. Your referee in charge of this contest is Michael DeJesus. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with gray. He weighed in at 139 pounds. With a record of 10 wins, just one loss, six wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of New Haven, Connecticut, by way of Puerto Rico. Please welcome Jeffrey El Bendecido his opponent fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks he weighed in at 139.6 pounds with a record of 26 wins five losses one draw with 19 wins by knockout from mexico city mexico please welcome antonio All right, 
Told y'all the rules in the locker room and in the corner. No one special. Touch goals if you want to. If not, go back to your corner. First of our four quarterfinal matchups. Go to ProBoxTV.com right now and subscribe. Antonio Moran, Jeffrey Torres, scheduled for eight rounds. Here we go! It's time to fight. Beautiful thing here is we got this old rivalry, Mexico versus Puerto Rico in our yes. first fight. You gotta love it, guys. This is what Pro Box TV is all about. Black trunks for Antonio Moran, Jeffrey Torres in the black with silver accent. Moran coming out fast and getting letting his hands go quickly. You can see why he's the favorite in this tournament. And when I looked at this draw, man, I was like, this could be a bad draw for Torres. Because when I looked at Torres and his record, he has more upside, yeah. I believe, than most in this tournament. Yeah, but man, he, he got a bad draw yeah. with the favorite right out the gate. Yeah, and Moran's been very, very active here in the first 45 seconds of the fight. Fought Devin Haney back in 2019. Antonio Moran is coming off a fight in which he went the 10 round distance with Arnold Barboza Jr. back in August of last year. So they say been in tough. He has been in tough, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, he has. And, and he knows his way around the ring because he's been in tough. Torres lands a couple of shots there. But for me, Torres is throughout the first minute and 15 seconds has had some trouble closing the gap a little bit. He reaches in there with a body shot. But Moran has been meeting him with punches and it's made Torres' life difficult trying to get it, make his way inside. And you see Torres has given up pretty much on the jab, and that was the only chance he had yeah. in order to get inside, break Antonio down, but he got to get behind that front hand yeah. instead well, of leaning in with the right. Well, Moran is definitely staying busy with that jab, speaking of jab. Worthy of note, Roy, you talk about Mexico, Puerto Rico. Antonio Moran was 23-2. and two. His first 25 fights were in Mexico. Came to fight in the U.S. for the first time and lost a 10-round unanimous decision to Puerto Rican Jose Pedraza. So he, he wants to, like, this battle means a little to him because it brings <laughs> back bad memories. A little get back, huh? Yeah, you well, got that right. Well, Pedraza, another guy, you know, he became a world champion after that. Yep. So Haney, Barboza, Pedraza. That's why Antonio... I think this Antonio is favored by many to be the last man standing and taking full advantage of his last chance. Yeah, he's a seasoned vet. I mean, with those names he's been in the ring with and not only been in the ring with, but the way he performed. I mean, that's why he's the favorite. You can tell he's under control. He's not overreacting. It's the way he go about his business in the ring. It's a bit different than what we've seen so far. And he, and he punches at different ranges. He's in close, he'll punch. From the outside, he'll punch. You, while on the other hand, you can tell Torres wants to be at a certain distance before he punches. He has a hard time letting his hands go or, or even punching his way in. He's, he's reaching. He's not using his jab, as you mentioned earlier in the round, Antonio. He's just trying to force shots from weird distances. And Moran beats him to the punch most of the time. And that's that mental pressure that Antonio Moran is putting on him right now. And you can tell, this is how you break these guys. If you can't break them physically, break them mentally. Paulie, the advice in that corner. Well, you know, I, I think Moran has had a good, has had a good first round. And I, I think, you know, if, if he can keep uh, Torres off balance like this with this activity and just keeping him on the end of those punches, it seems like Torres gets a bit timid and doesn't respond in the way he should, you know. And when he does respond, he's frustrated. He's trying to throw one or two at a time. And that's sort of work. I mean, if the adjustments are on the, are on the, are on the, hands of Moran of, of, of Torres at this point. He's got to use that jab first and foremost to work his way inside and then punch a combination once he gets there. And he's still not using that jab. And those things you mentioned, I believe, just inexperienced. He's only had 11 fights. So he still is a work in progress, Torres is. And he's in there with a veteran. 33rd professional fight, Roy, for Antonio Moran. 
19 of his 26 wins by knockout. Well, what Moran understands is that all contact in 10-ounce or 8-ounce gloves is good contact. That's what the uh, young Cat Torres does not understand yet. He hasn't had enough fights to understand that taking those punches with your hands on your face is just as bad as getting hit with them. Yeah, and you're right, Roy, because that also stresses the mentality as well. It's that mental pressure, too. Shots are always coming your way. You're not answering. Makes you keep your hand home even more. Yep, exactly. And that's why he doesn't seem to show a jab, because he's worried about getting hit, because everything he does is in close, you know? Right. He puts himself right. in close all the time. That's how you fight a taller guy sometimes, but you got to use a jab at some point. That was a good shot. That was a good counter right hand. But, Roy, to your point, exactly. These guys got to master distance. Sometimes you in so close, you got to have alligator arms to be effective. Yep. Get your range and let that work for you. Good counter. And he's, I tell you what, one thing Moran's done, Torres had a big crowd here, and Moran has taken Quiet Torres' down. crowd out of the fight. Jeffrey Torres coming off a first-round TKO oh, victory 84 days ago. Good shot. His third straight win, his last three wins, have all come by knockout. A first round stop, a second round finish, and a first round finish back in October of 2021. But sometimes when you get those knockouts like that early, that's what does, does, does not allow you to develop that jab and how to create that distance to be most effective. And because he has those early knockouts like that, it makes us wonder the caliber of the opponents he fought because we see clearly he's a great inside fighter. He throws good punches inside, but he does not know how to use his jab to get inside. I see what Torres is trying to do now. He feels that he's going to be able, he's going to have to counter Antonio Moran in order to get him in trouble. But I believe he has power on those shots the way he's throwing them. He does, but he's giving up too many shots, Tony, to get it. You feel me? He's giving up way too many shots to be effective later on. The further this fight goes, the, the worse he's going to be for him. Yeah, and, and Moran is a vet guy who's been in with top fighters. Even if you do get his attention with a big shot, he, it's not going to really break his will that easily. But Moran is the kind of guy, he's at a pretty good level in his career. Now, to Torres credit, he does have those hands high. He's catching a lot of those shots on the glove. But Antonio Moran is being effective. Watch those counters. I believe Torres is going to get close with a counter here shortly. I tell you, I like how Torres picked up the pace a little bit in the, in the last third of that round. Let's see if he can take that momentum into round three. He got Moran. Moran still was active, but he got Moran backing up a lot more uh, uncomfortably than he was before that. ¿Qué te dije? Cuando tiras la derecha te la va a parar. Entonces, ¿qué haces? Boom. Aquí te la va. Acuérdate. Te lo para. Te lo para. And then basically they would tell Moran in the corner. Uh, they would tell Moran in the corner, catch those shots and shoot right back. When he's throwing, when he's throwing those shots at your body, make sure you got your guard up and then be ready to shoot right back at him. And that's sort of to counter the the, the shot, the hard shots of Torres was trying to throw in there on the inside. Antonio Moran had some decent moments in his fight against Devin Haney. He showed decent hand speed, likes the lead right to the body, as we have seen. Lost some steam as it got later on, and then the fast hands of Haney did the damage in the finish. And, well, that, and that may be why, Moran, uh, what's his name? Torres. Torres is fighting the way he's fighting. He's thinking that he can possibly wear Moran down. Yep. To wear him around down like 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 um, Haney did, it's possible he can get him out of there. And although his last three fights, Roy, have ended very early, the three prior to that were six round fights that all went the distance. Round three. Now Torres can't afford to have his back against the ropes. Not at With all. a veteran like Moran, he's going to have to either pivot off of there or get up under that heat. Good right hand by Torres. Look like the exchange is now, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. exchange is. Torres seems like he's, he's more determined to come forward now, whether he's taking shots or, or, or throwing shots. He just has to come forward. He's trying to put that mental pressure back onto Moran. But Moran is answering with shots, and Torres is not. He definitely can't beat Moran backing up. He has to go forward to beat Moran. I like his counter punching ability, though. I think he's getting closer. 
Now he's landed some good counter shots this round. He landed some good ones last round. Uh -huh. But he got to keep going forward as he counted. But is it, counted. Is, it, is it enough in comparison to what Moran is doing? What tell you what, this round's showing you why they call this thing last chance. Because yep. Torres seems like he was about to mentally, you know, Great. just give in a little bit. Now he's just going for it. And Moran is not going to give in to him either. I love the way Torres is putting those little quick combinations together. There you go. Like Roy said, last last chance. If these guys don't come in hungry, they shouldn't have walked in the door. And both of these guys are hungry, and they're showing it right now. Oh, Moran going from Southport to Water. You saw that right hand, little that right nifty hand. little move. <laughs> that was Pee Wee Pee Wee Whitaker type. <laughs> <laughs> Final fight, our Christmas gift to you before we would love to have you as a loyal fan at ProBoxTV.com. Good body Good shot. Good body shot, yep. Yeah, if you like what you're watching, go to ProBoxTV.com. You'll be able to watch the rest of this call. Oh. And you'll get the podcast <laughs> material. Paulie, like you guys breaking down the upcoming oh, fight. Oh, good counter. Hey, I think that shoulder roll is in full effect right now. <laughs> he, did it, he did it twice and caught it with the right hand. The upcoming fight, Haney and Cambosis, June 5th in Melbourne, Australia. Check out the podcast. Roy, Antonio, and Paulie break that and other big fights worth coming down. We cover everything. We're about promoting the sport and putting on great battles. And these men have delivered the early part of our last chance tournament. Exactly what we look for. These guys are looking like this is their last chance. Yes. Yes. Both fighting desperation, hungry. Both fighting. Neither guy wanted to give in. Giving it their best. Torres might have woke up late, but he woke up. He woke up. <laughs> Jeffrey Torres with Luis Rosa, his cut man is Jesse Thompson in New Haven, Connecticut. Your head as well. Stop doing that. Go back, go back, go back, back. Our first quarter final continues round four. Moran Man. in the solid black, Torres in the black and silver, and like you said, Antonio Mann, they're coming out. <laughs> Moran comes out throwing heat early. Roy Torres really wants to be inside, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He likes to end game. He likes to fight inside. He's nothing like the normal, traditional Puerto Rican fighter who loves to move around and box. He's a straight ahead. Ooh. He's more like the Mexican here. The Mexican like to be close chest to chest. He's acting like he's a Mexican. He's trying to get chest to chest with the Mexican. He's trading right now with Moran. He's trading. Yeah, he's forcing Moran's output to stay high. I wonder how this will affect Moran's conditioning later in the fight. Because he came out very fast this yeah. round. Antonio Moran coming off that fight against Arnold Barboza Jr. back in August. Barboza now 26 and 0. That was a 10 round fight. It went the distance. One thing you do see about Moran, and this is how you know he's a veteran. You very see him when we talked about a few slaps with the younger guys. You very rarely see Moran slap. Most of the punches he throw are thrown correctly with the knuckles. He's not loading up or winging them, coming over. Most everything is straight and compact, and we, effective punch. And when you throw them right like that, you don't have to wing them because they're going to be hard anyway. Exactly. Torres trying to dig into the body. Torres knows he's going to have to land a shot here yeah. to turn this fight around because right now, those type of combinations, Moran is taking over this fight. That, that roll count, I, I tell you, man. Torres roll. seems to like it. It works, right? I love that shoulder roll he's using. Come off that right hand right there. I love it. Now, he, if he can mix that shoulder roll up with some good inside combinations. He got an educated right hand. It's like he blocked defensively and come yeah. right over with offense. 
again, one punch at a time, Paulie. I like yeah. to see combinations. And there well, you go. Well, Moran is listening to you. Moran throws in, in combination. <laughs> Torres only once in a while. That was two good punches by Torres, though. That, yeah, right, right there. Good there it There's is. That roll count There's again. a combination. A three-punch combination. There you come. Yep. Torres on the counter scores. And, and he is. He's trying to make this a dog fight, Roy. Well, Moran starts around that strong, and Torres ends around strong. <laughs> yeah. But again, I'm seeing Torres hesitate a little bit. There's oh. a good combination. Moran with a big right hand. You, this is what exchange. Oh, oh, good, good body, body shot. shot. Yes. This is what Pro Box TV is all about. Here come Torres. He's leaning in with that right hand. Oh. Instead of coming with the... This is, yo, this is... Both guys are fighting like, <laughs> like it's the last piece of, like it's the last bone in the yard. And like last, two chance. last chance. Last baby. chance, baby. <laughs> Great round. Moran changed corners since September of last year. They late with the stool getting yeah, in. Yeah, you can't have that now. Everybody does not talk about changing corners. <laughs> <laughs> Moran with some solid combinations. Some action from that round. That was a nice combination by Torres. And they're uh, on the uppercut by uh, Moran as well. Good two-way exchange there. Ooh. And this is a good body Ooh. shot. That was a nice body shot by Torres. Followed with a chopping right hand to the head. Best body shot of the night, in my opinion. Yeah. That part. And especially after Miranda just let some shots go, so you're trying to re-oxygenate. Re you take a body <laughs> shot like that, you're going to have more trouble re-oxygenating. Re Round five. Each I last chance fight scheduled for eight rounds. Moran in the black, Torres in the Ooh. black and silver. Antonio, if you're scoring this fight thus far, where does it stand? Man, it's a very, very close fight, but I do have to give the uh, lead to Moran right now. It seems like he won the first two rounds. Torres made it contested the last two. It's a good fight. It's, it's really simmering to be a a, 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 bon, a barn burner. Yeah, it's a, not an easy round to fight to score. After the first two no. rounds, I think even Moran kind of won the third round. But round four, man, you started making cases for, for Torres. And we'll see if he can continue this momentum. Because it's, he's, he's determined to come forward. But Moran, he cannot let Moran outwork him like this. So he's just going to keep giving it back. And Roy, that's exactly what you said. Good start of that round for Moran. Yep. Great finish for Torres. That's how it's been happening lately. Uh, Moran starts out really good. Torres ends it really strong. So we have to see what happens. I do have Moran winning right now, I think. I think he won three rounds to one. But if Torres is coming on at the end like that, he may come on at the end of the fight like this. So we'll see what happens. Good punches by Moran. And good spin out afterwards. And that's what the, this is how this fight has really gone. Moran beats him to the punch, and by the time Torres reacts, Moran is gone. Yeah. Good kind of hook. Yeah. Until we get to the second half of the round, and then Torres starts to catch up to him. Let's see if this happens again in this round now. Good hook. I'll tell you, Torres starts to usually close the gap in this part of the round, but right now Moran Boxing nicely on the outside. What Torres had to do is what he did right there. He got to put more punches together. If he puts more punches together, he'll land that third and fourth punch more, more often, and it'll be better for him. With Moran, he got to punch and get out. Don't stay there. Just like that. Punch and get out of there. Don't stay there. If you stay there, you get it right back. You and can't the, stay there. Just like that. Exactly. The difference I see is Moran doesn't have to be set to punch, and it looks like Torres has to get set maybe two seconds before yeah. he punches, and it's too late for and him to see, be effective. It seems like Torres wants to land the perfect punch. Right? Yeah. He gets in there, he's a little tight, he's trying to land that perfect punch. Moran doesn't care what kind of punch he hits you with, he's right. just hitting you. Which is why I say he should get out afterwards, because Torres got to gotta beat up for a minute for Torres to get you back. So that's the biggest adjustment you would want to see from Antonio Moran. Right, exactly. So he should have moved off the line right there. Right. He stayed on the line, yeah. see? He stays there, you give it right back. Let go, let go. Right. What a way to start our last chance tournament. Put a ProBoxTV.com right now. Big oh. shot. I tell you, for Torres, if only these rounds are four minutes, Torres will be <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good combination to finish the round. Yeah, that's good.
Tiene que tener más ganas de ganar. Tiene que tirar combinaciones. Está llegando donde él. Y está esperando a estar cómodo. Si no estás cómodo, como quiera tienes que tirar. Él no se va a quedar quieto para que tú lo golpees el cuerpo. Lo tienes a golpeado y lo dejas ir atrás. Lo tienes a golpeado y lo dejas ir. Y él te tiene un par de golpes y se va en punto. Está, no está ganando ahora mismo. Está peleando bien, pero no está ganando ahora mismo. Tiene que pelear. Cuando ya vea, mete los cachos por debajo, se mira arriba. Si quiere pasar el pañito. Es más agua. Es más agua. Uh, every round seems to be the end of the round for Jeffrey Torres. Our first quarter final continues round six. 140 pound tournament. Good job. Looks like Torres coming out to be a little bit more assertive in this round. He's being very aggressive. Yeah, he's gonna make he's gonna have to give himself a shot at this fight. He's gotta make it happen now. He's gotta start making it happen now and get to Moran from the get-go in each and every one of these next rounds. And he started to use a jab now. That's very impressive. He didn't use it at all the first half of the fight, but now he's starting to use it. He was just bulldogging inside throughout the early part, right, Roy? Yep, there's no jab at all. Now he's using that jab every now and then. It makes it better for him, and it changes the way that his attack limits. It gives him more distance. The problem for him, Torres, though, is in the time you were, you were saying that, Roy, Moran threw about eight jabs, and Torres <laughs> didn't even throw one. And again, I just believe that's because if you look at the pro, look at his footwork. He's galloping in the ring. He's not walking. Yep. Look at Torres. Good hook. He's walking, and it takes him longer yep. to get set. Yep. Good right hand. Good right hand. Torres over the top. Yeah, good observation, Antonio. Those subtle little technical foundations really go a long way in, in close competitive fights. It does. Ooh, good right hand. A good counter. Right back by Antonio Moran. Beautiful. Paul, I didn't say he was a jabber. I said he used it. He's using it. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I know. No, I because I, I saw you observe it, and I'm like, all right, we're seeing him. And then I'm like, man, just as Royce complimented him, he stopped using it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Not quite a jabber, just a, a, a jab. He's falling in with that right hand like that. He has to stay behind that right hand. Don't get in front of the power. Deepest fight of a professional oh. matchup for Jeffrey Torres has been six rounds. We have a minute on the clock here in round six. And let's not forget, this is a tournament, so the winner will be advancing. Oh, good, good right hand. Oh, another one. Torres we go. momentum here. There we go. He smothered, smothered himself. He did all that good work, and then he smothered himself. That right hand is educated, though. The way he's throwing it. Oh, good hook. But, it, but Torres throws that right hand. Oh. Torres again with the combination. That third, that second and third punch. That second and third punch. Jeffrey Torres <laughs> may have the thinner <laughs> resume, but, but he believes in himself, and you can see why. Man, this young man but is I'm, growing up right before our eyes, Paul. Man, but I'll tell you something with Torres. It, it makes me laugh a little bit because he's he's throwing, starting to throw the shots in combinations. He's starting to land the shots. But I'm telling you, every time he lands a shot, you can tell his level of opposition has not been this high. Because every time he lands a shot, he looks at the opponent like he's going to go down. And Moran ain't going nowhere, bro. Moran is jumping around, throwing punches back. But every time we fought six rounds, every time Moran lands a shot, he's looking at Moran. Every time Torres lands a shot, he's looking at Moran, like waiting for him to go down and waiting for him to wobble. The guy's not going anywhere, man. You ain't the going first yet. 11 opponents are you fought weren't at this level. These guys stand up and fight back. You got to stay focused. But neither, was it, neither, neither was it their last chance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? No matter who win or lose, they might get another chance after yeah. fighting and competing like this. Yep. Well, they're on a platform that we are so proud and happy to be part of. You guys is true where we're going to give them the visibility that they do deserve. And right now, these two men are earning it. Yep. And I'll tell you something else. If we do a second, second chance, last chance tournament, <laughs> I would definitely start losing this fight right back in. Yes, sir. Then will it be the yeah, last, 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 last chance tournament? The loser's bracket and the winner's bracket. Exactly. Round seven. Ooh. Deepest 
Jeffrey Torres at 10 and 1 has gone in a professional fight. And we talked about the Puerto Rican handing the Mexican Antonio Miranda's first loss years back. Looking ahead to our main event, Torres' only loss came to a Canadian. So Jean Pascal later in our main event with Mong Fan Long. This is our first of four quarterfinal matchups in our last chance 140 pound tournament. You can tell that Moran realizes that Torres is in unfamiliar territory right now. He's picking up the pace because he knows Torres has never went seven rounds. So now he's attacking him as to say, okay, I know something about you. I did my homework. You've never well, been seven rounds. This round is yes. virgin territory for you. Hey, look, he's even hit on the break. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's, he's trying knows. to get in his head. That's a veteran move. He knows where he's at in the fight at all times. A lot of these guys got to learn how to win. Yep. And look at that. Moran, a few seconds ago, not accepting oh, the clinch. uppercut. And for Moran, his last 10 fights, nine have been 10 rounders. The other was a 12-round fight. And he's gone the distance more than once. That type of experience you can't buy. But Torres is going to be better for it if he falls short tonight. Good hook. Now you see the body, great fights. You see the body language. The body language says, I'm comfortable in the seventh round. Yeah. And it says, I'm, one of them says, I'm not comfortable right. yeah, in the yeah. seventh round. Torres looking for clinches. While Moran looking to break those clinches and continue to throw the punches in combinations, force the action. And this is a perfect example of how your mind plays tricks on you. If you don't believe you can, then your body starts to act likewise. And it's actually very... the first eight round fight, Paulie, scheduled for Moran since 2016. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he, he's been he's been in 10 and 12 rounds this the whole time. Good job. To the right cheek of uh Torres swelling up. But you see the body language of Torres, too. Yeah. He's yeah. not coming forward like he was last round. That sixth round, he treated it like it was his last round. It's uncharted waters yeah, exactly. for Torres, and you can tell by his body language, like Roy was just saying, he got to get off that rope. Yeah. Good right hand. It's one thing knowing, as you look at your opponent's record, that you're probably going to have to go there. It's another thing, actually, being there live. Right, Roy? You better believe it. Ooh, good shot. We will head to the eighth and final been. round. And this is the first of three tonight? Yeah. <laughs> we in for a treat. As Moran was getting up off the stool, his train is telling him, jab, jab, jab. Last round, basically telling him to just keep that control. He realized that Torres does not answer just off, just when, when Moran just it keeps that activity high. Final three minutes of a gift to you, our great passionate fight fans. Less than a cup of coffee, $1.99 a month, $18 a year. Go to ProBoxTV.com, subscribe, and yes, for just that amount of money, you will see highly priced matchup in our main event of the evening for a great bargain. Jean Pascal, Monk Van Law. For a dollar ninety nine, you already up on the cards. You got, you got <laughs> more you bargain for right here already. already. If you pay a dollar ninety nine for this. One. Oh, Torres trying to work his way in. He realizes he needs a knockout, but he's smothering himself. He's forcing his way in so much that he's not cognizant of the distance his proper distance that he needs to be at to maximize his punching power. He's just working so hard to get inside that he's not even throwing. And again, he's not jabbing his way in. It's a Mexico chain start now. Yeah, he's going to have to look for an exchange and just land that shot if you want to win this fight. But again, 
He matured right before our eyes. I like what I saw in Torres. He just fought a monster tonight. And the crowd is into it, man. Oh, this, this, oh. oh. Torres with a big overhand right. And Torres didn't like those Mexico chants, see? He said, I came out to my cheers and my, my people cheering. He got to follow that right hand up with a hook, though. He's landed it a few times. But a, a nice follow-up short hook yeah. could do some damage. And that's the thing. That's been his problem all night. He hasn't followed up with that hook. And I'll when he go you. back and look at the tape, it's going to be his footing. Yep. It's going to be his balance yeah, a lot and of his times footing. He comes up. Yep. And you got to look at this, you guys. This will only be a second loss. Yeah. Yeah. So this yep. might not be his last chance. Right, exactly. Yeah, Especially tenants. if he get in the gym and work on some of the stuff we've been talking and about And now tonight. with this level of opposition, he exactly. learned. Exactly. And his loss was to... An unbeaten 7-0 Canadian Josh Wagner. Roy and Antonio, nice to have Paulie to translate like nine different languages for us. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie, when when we get Jameen Wong and Mung no, Fan Long, no, no. can you handle that? I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that, but I spoot up the cake cursing out the ref for me though. That's <laughs> another but. I'm gonna start calling him Mr. Siri. There you go. <laughs> wow, action up the headbutt here. <laughs> Mr. Siri, Magic Man Light, Pauli Malinaggi, Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones Jr., Mike Goldberg. Final 30 seconds of our first last chance oh, for the final. Torres again over the top. Still one Another shot at a time. But that's one shot he, at that's a time. That's why I mean, he throws it like he expects it, the guy to go down when he lands it. He never that comes up with another punch after. There, oh, there, you see what happened when he does oh, that? Just I say that, he came back with a double hook. He you heard, see the success? He heard he, we, well, he was on our side of the road. Yeah, he heard on our side of the road for it. Torres thinks he heard him. Torres thinks he heard him. Can he get one more counter shot in it? What a fight! And it's still fighting. Uh, oh, man, they were ready to go fight. 10. Forget eight, they were ready to go 10. Good action, man, I'll tell wow. you. Good action, what a... This is what get dollar ninety nine. Go to ProMoxTV.com right now. Get the rest of this tournament because we got three more quarterfinals tonight. Plus your main event, Pascal versus Montfrey Long, and then you're gonna have it for the semis the next time we go and the finals. You want to watch the rest of this tournament? Subscribe now. One right ninety nine a month. And I promise you they didn't want to go ten. <laughs> Great fight. Yes, it was. They went eight in about seven more seconds. <laughs> they were battling Ooh, after the fight. I feel tired <laughs> watching that fight. Man, that's the action you want. That's and then we're not about. even close to the main event. This is the undercard. We're still going with these with this tournament. More fights from the last chance tournament coming up. Like I said, subscribe, ProBoxTV.com to get the rest of the night's action. And Jeffrey Torres, man, I still thought, and still think he might have more upside, upside yeah. than anybody yeah. in the tournament. Yeah. Without a question. Yo, man, I, I'd pay to see Torres again. Oh, yeah. I think we'd say the same Moran won this fight. We don't know the scorecards, but I'll tell you, man, Torres has earned his keep. That's a fire you'll pay for. Both, both fighters should be proud of themselves tonight. We saw our future star series behind the scenes inside the ropes content daily podcast material with these three great champions and the continuation of our last chance tournament proboxtv.com right now the official decision has been rendered by the judges what's your name Jeffrey. Who? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the scorecards, I want to remind you that the winner advances to the semifinals of the Pro Box TV Last Chance 140 pound tournament. And now, after eight exciting rounds, we go to the scorecards. Joanne Richards scores the bout 79 73. While James O'Connor and Tito Wilgo both see it 77 75 for your winner by unanimous decision, Antonio Tonya Moran! Two scorecards out of five rounds to three. The favorite advances to the semifinals, but man, he was pushed to the limit. Yes, he was. 
two score, two judges had it 77-75. That's a one-round swing. Yeah. I didn't think it was that close. But the action, you know, it didn't look like a unanimous decision by the action that we right. saw from both guys. Yeah. And that way you finish rounds, Roy, is that, that you get that judge thinking, oh, I, I forgot about that Sorry. first minute or so, right? Yep. This is the guy. That's exactly right. Every, and, and the fact that he did that all night. He kept coming on at the end of the round. So sometimes the judges gave him credit for those rounds that he came on in because he finished strong. That's the last thing they remember. Yep. Yep. I'll tell you another thing, man. If, if every fight in this tournament winds up this good, <laughs> we're going to have to consider starting a loser's bracket with like, like like they used to do in the Olympic trials right. in the amateurs. I'm, yeah. actually, I'm actually considering that now yeah. because I want to see this kid again. Most definitely. Yeah. You so understand I mean. me? Most definitely. Well, you guys are all partners in this Pro Box TV, so I That's think if you I say you want to do now. it, right, do it. Yes. And here's that action from that fight. You see, they, they started moving their hands from the go. I mean, Moran obviously was more fluid, and he was able to get more shots off. But what a fight. Action, good action fights. And Torres in those middle rounds started giving those little shoulder rolls with that right hand, and he was starting to land some good right hands. Beautiful combination. And with the lessons Torres learned tonight, I bet you he's going to go back and watch this tape he might ask for a rematch. <laughs> and, he's gotta, and he'll learn to come back with the hook, because when he does come back with the hook, he's even more dangerous, yep. okay, uh, of Tor Torres is. He grew up tonight right in front of our eyes, you know? And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And we gotta see him again. Antonio Moran, we will see again. Winner by unanimous decision, the first to advance to the semifinals of our last chance tournament. He will face the winner of the Michael Dutchover and Mr. St. Pete Clarence Booth fight. And what a way to get things started. We had two of our future stars go the distance. Daniel Blancas, four round unanimous decision win. Josiah Shirley moves to five and oh with a six round unanimous decision victory. We just watched Moran and Torres put on a show still to come who will fight Antonio Moran. And then our main event is Monk Van Long and Jean Pascal. And in June, Friday.